First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of the ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Peace, peace. We back once again. First World Order Radio. We're going to have our special guest coming on in a few. And that's Brother Panic. You know who he is. One of the top metaphysicians in his field and occultists. And we're going to bring on Brother L here and see if he can. Okay. Brother L, you here? Yes, sir, brother. I tell you, what's your East, brother? Hey, what's your East? I'm glad. Okay. Okay, I got you on. Um, making sure I was able to get you on. All right. Um, so um, what we're going to be doing tonight is going over some question and answering. Um, from Brother Panic, but before we even get to that, I got something that I want to drop uh-huh. on the, um, you know, conscious community, you know, as we say. And um, it's dealing actually with um, the death of um, Nelson Mandela that's supposed to have taken place December the 5th. Um, however, we have reports on which that he actually died June 26th, uh-huh. you know, of, of earlier this year. Now, what are some of the facts concerning it? Well, let's go into it. Um, there's an article called, Did Obama Know Date of Mandela's Death was June 26, 2013. Mm-hmm. Now, I found the article interesting because it gave some connection pieces, like, for example, President Barack Obama may have already known the real date of Nelson Mandela's death and studiously planned funeral when he made his June 2013 African trip and was even able to take the photo he would later tweet on the day of Mandela's official announced death while he was still in South Africa. Now, claiming to deter the Mandela family members on visiting the Ellen Mandela during his June 28th through 30th, which is called Whistle Stop Through Johannesburg, Obama instead met with South African President Jacob Zuma. Now, Zuma was one of the key figures who kept the news that the doctors had been keeping Mandela alive in a vegetative state a top world secret. Now, I said among thousands of news outlets, 
Only one newspaper made a vigilant attempt to get the true story out and basically keep it there. And that actually was um, Las Vegas Guardian Express. And it stated that Mandela died on June 26, 2013, and was kept on life support until December the 2013, um, which actually wow. until December the 5th, 2013. Mm-hmm. Now, anyone who have read the Las Vegas Guardian Express um, from June onward, we know that he did die on June 26, 2013, and the article published and stated that the icon had been declared dead and the family told to shut down the life support system. The article had been written after two sources connected and contacted um, the papers, um, South African correspondents, to relate that the legend had actually died on June 11th, or more accurately, was declared brain dead. But mm-hmm. officially... By June 26. Now, check this out. It says, on December the 5th, um, the White House tweeted a picture showing Obama holding the bars of Robin Island's prison. Now, you know, the um, Robin Island prison, that's where um, they would take the so-called slaves and transport them during what is called the transatlantic or the mid-Atlantic slave trade. Now, that was near there, I should say, but this is actually where on um, Robin Island actually was the prison, excuse me, where Mandela was held at incarcerated for 27 years. Right. But the picture tweeted was on December the 5th, 2013, but the photo was taken actually June 29th, 2013, when Barack and Michelle Obama visit um, the famous site there, and, you know, um, they're in... Um, you know, in South Africa. And it said that um, this is the story of Mandela, June 26th death, follow, following his persistent vegetative state, as reported by the Guardian Express. So this is what they um, said about it, all right? And um, there's some other things in which they, they talk about here in which that definitely knocks out some of the things in which that has been stated as far as his, or as his so-called official death now of just, you know, dying December 20, you know, December the 5th. So um, I just want to drop that right quick and um, have everybody go and do their research and study and find out what's really going on here, you know, some more forced flags. But then we know that they love to do rituals. Mm-hmm. Um, we know that one of the things right. in which that just in which that we know that AFRICOM had entered into Africa um, during the Bush administration. He put that together in which that, you know, AFRICOM is actually there in order to rape Africa again, you know, of its resource, diamonds, gold, minerals, oil. Matter of fact, the United States is now purchasing more oil from Africa than they are from Saudi Arabia. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and um, one of the interesting things is that just less, just less, actually just a little over two weeks ago, you know, um, the maritime force for um, Africa, in particular East Africa, the United States, and the European <laughs> nations completed exercise um, called the Cutlass Express 2013. And it says the Cutlass Express is one of the four African regional express series, all right, exercises facilitated by the United States Naval Forces, Europe, Naval Forces, and Africa, all right. The objective of the exercise was to increase regional cooperation, in other words, colonialization, mm-hmm. <laughs> and put right. it in their puppeteers. It says maritime um, dominant awareness, information sharing, and improved communication amongst participating forces in order to counter um, piracy and maritime threats. And, okay, so that's what just ended, you know, um, less than a week prior to um, also of Nelson Mandela's um, so-called death of December the 5th. Mm-hmm. So, 
mm-hmm. a joint effort by the United States, by the European nations, and by almost 51 um, countries, or you know, so-called states in Africa, you know? Um, and one of the things in which that they was talking about was that, well, it actually th- about 35 out of the 51 states. But one of the things in which they was talking about was that South Africa um, was real skeptical about the United States coming in with their forces, and actually did not like it, and would not actually com- and actually would not communicate with the four-star general, um, General Ham. Um, at the time, um, they would not talk with him. They would not invite him into the country in order to sit down to mediate. Um, matter of fact, the ANC basically said, hell no. And you know the former president of the ANC was Nelson Mandela. Um, so they were saying this, and so AFRICOM did not have a way into South Africa at that time, but of course now with the death of Nelson Mandela, you know, that opens some type of leadway now, mm-hmm. you know, and the reason why they sprung it on, you know, at this particular time, you know, a week and a half right after this so-called East African, you know, um, express or cutlass express in which that they were supposedly protecting the borders, you know, the waters and the borders of Africa on the eastern Seaboard, and of course, he would love to get down into um, South Africa in order to, you know, put in their military um, industrialization, because that's basically what it is. Um, mm-hmm. Industry, you know, is to put in their military to set up a military base, and that's actually what they've been doing within these 35 countries um, or more in Africa. You know, so we wanted to talk about that right quick, and so everybody go and do your research and check it out and see what's going on. Right, right now I'm getting ready to bring on Brother Panic. Brother Panic, you here, bro? Peace. What's going on, Aline? Peace. Right, how you doing tonight? Chilling. What's up, Brother Al? Uh, what's up, uh, 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 Brother Panic? How you doing today, brother? Everything's good. Everything's good. It's interesting right, what right. you were saying, Aline. <clears throat> Real interesting what you were saying. All right. And um, when uh, the first thing that comes to me, once once someone makes a transition and they hold on to them like that, it's definitely ritual. And they're trying to release. Exactly. They're trying to release the information at a certain time to create. And it sounds like you already laid it out uh, mm-hmm. to to uh, create an energy for a certain event. Yeah. Um, that's right. why, like, uh, we did it with James Brown. Um, they had his body oh. out for a certain amount of days um, on, on the 25th because it was bringing in that winter solstice. And um, yeah. um, out of that death, something new comes about. So it, they may be uh, preparing to get into something new, like you said. So when they uh, they have a sacrifice, and see, the sacrifice works it's not the day he died, it's the day the people believe he died because yeah. the sorrow, the sorrow exactly. or the the mourning is what they're trying to feed off of. So they're exactly. trying to release, they're, they're trying to get you to mourn at a certain time. When, whenever you have a synchronized emotion, it actually goes into a layer in the, mm-hmm. uh, in the uh, uh, atmosphere, mm-hmm. a layer right. that they're trying to tap into. Like, uh, for instance, Christianity, when, you know, you know, everyone's so well, they got the steeples as antennas on top of the building because all of that jumping up and down, kundalini uh, spitting at the mouth on a Sunday over, over a deity called, an uh, 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 invention called Jesus, creates an energy white. frequency in the air. Right, yeah. the white yeah. creates an energy frequency. That's why Sunday has a feel to it. Yeah. <laughs> now, and that's why Sunday has a feel to it because there's a certain energy in the air. So they did it with Reagan as well. Um, it was reported that Reagan had been dead, and his fucking facsimile, you know, has been hanging. Uh, they 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 told us it was dead at a certain time, and so we could get the energy in 
uh, who was it that uh, somebody black important passed away at the same time? So they used that energy to try to send Reagan to a hey, greater death. That was death. Um, Ray Charles. Ray Charles, right. right. Ray Ch- it was Ray Charles. Right. Um, three, so, and Reagan supposedly mm-hmm. died at 95, something like that. Right, mm-hmm. And right. And the thing that happened with Gerald Ford, too, who died at 95, and then during that same time, uh-huh. The same day, uh-huh. um, James Brown died at the age of 73. Yeah. Right. All of that's ritual. And all, what right. they're trying to do is take these, these, these dead individuals and use that same right. energy that we're mourning for something that's real. Right. James, uh, uh, James Brown, um, uh, uh, Ray Charles, and so on. And, and, and they're trying to use that energy to skyrocket their energy someplace else or use yeah. the energy to... Uh, push an agenda, you know what I mean? Kill, kill thousands right. of nine eleven, then start a war. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's a sacrifice. Right. My wife was saying that um, mm-hmm. you know, possibly could be Paul Walker, um, you know, uh, Paul Walker, that's right. in connection with um, you know, Nelson Mandela. Right. Oh, interesting. That's right. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yes, yes. Well, that's right. Very interesting because yes, that, 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 that's very on point. That's very on point. We need to pay attention to that. Near the, Definitely. Uh, the, the Saturnalian Festival, too. Uh, right. Where the stars and, uh, sets at, and where the moon mm-hmm. sets at, where the sun sets at, and we have all that correlated with Mandela's right. death here near the Saturnalian Festival. And, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, all that's coincided with each other. Right. All coincide. And there's, what's interesting is when you look at the the Paul Walker crash scene, the fucking tree is some shit you could dig up with your hands. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It should look like you know it should look like an elephant stepped on this car, but if you see the tree, it just, it just don't add up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know it, it just don't add up. So you know all that's interesting, and it's definitely ritual. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely oh, yeah. ritual. No doubt. You know I mean um, you know you, you, people got to need to remember who these people are. You know what I mean? You know, because I heard a couple of people, well, he's 90-something, and da 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 That ain't got nothing to do with it, you know what I'm saying? They just could wait for him to die, and again, the ritual, um, they didn't have to kill him, but now that he is dead, they can use still use the energy, which is right, basically but this, telling you. Mm-hmm. But the funny thing is is that he was 95 also. Right. Mm-hmm. He was 95. Gerald Ford was 95. Ronald Reagan right. was 95. Okay. Mm-hmm. Allegedly ninety. They were both allegedly ninety five. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Interesting. All yeah. ritual. I mean, all ritual. You know what I'm saying? All ritual. It's a matter of seeing what develops. You know, it's as the world turns. Shit. You know what I mean? Right. The only thing you can see what what develops. It sounds like a limb already broke. What's going on with him? You know what I mean? Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Oh, broke. What's going on? With him. Quite interested indeed. So yes, we are here once again. We'll be back this week. I didn't get a chance to send out many emails, so the room is not overflowing like usual. It's a busy week, so we're going to still come back next week as well to keep it going. And uh, we're going to do continue with Q and A, and I'm bringing up a couple of things. I find interesting. I didn't get a chance. It was a very hectic week. And next week I'm going to start classes. But I didn't get a chance. But I was going to start to deal with some stuff. And I can't remember the scientific name. There's a scientific name for what we commonly call fate. Now, the textbook definition of fate. Let's go on and get it real quick. So, uh. So we could just have it. We can only talk about this just a little bit. I had it up earlier. All right, one second. And um, and I'm gonna read it textbook style, so we so we know. I right, fate. It just means the development of events beyond a person's control. Regarded and determined by a supernatural power. 
So a development of events based upon – that's beyond a human control, something that you cannot control, determined by a supernatural power, meaning something that's greater than you. Now, when we walk around and say, well, we're gods, we're goddesses and laws of attraction, it seems to contradict but there's actually a theory. I can't remember the name of this shit. And that, like I said, I didn't get a chance to get into it because I was going to go a little bit harder. But there's something that you perceive as free will, and there's something that's laid, and fate is something that's laid out beforehand. Now, way before I started even pondering the concept um, in, in my study, I started noticing spiritually. And, and how things would line up, that there were certain things or certain events that seemed to have been put into place on a personal level, on a, on a major level, that it, it seems to have been put in place not while I'm here, but a decision I made before I got here. As if I made, and when I did a, a when I got the channels, um, what I was told back then, and not even connecting it to what we're talking about now, that we all made these agreements. There were there would be a, there were agreements that I said I would meet up with a lean. There's agreements that said I'll be a more with a lean, and then in the future, me and the lean will do this. Me and Bobby will do this. Me and this one will do that. Your father will do that. Your uncle will do that. Your sister will do that. This one will disappoint you. This one will make you happy. All of these things happen because it configures you for your path, which is something else conscious people like to say all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's your path, it's your path, it's your path. Well, what's your path? And where was your path laid out? And as a god or a goddess, when did you lay this path out, if you will? So if you hear the definition of fate, regarded, determined as a supernatural power, something that was put in effect that's beyond a person's control, uh, we know there's nothing outside of us. See, the average person would say Jesus or God is doing that. But what I've come to, even again, before I started to deal with this, what I come to the determination was we made these choices, and basically living this human existence is actually you playing out choices that you made prior, and we're calling it fate. Now, if I remember the scientific name, it would sound a little bit more special. You get what I'm saying? Or destiny. Um but um, the, the idea is, uh, first and foremost, us understanding that this is an illusion, that this does not exist. Uh, um, there's nothing really we can, until we're in it, can come down here and really say has happened to us more than the perceived experience. So this is not really happening. You didn't really get robbed. You didn't really, you was never really a slave. Uh, you never really was raped. You never really raped anyone. Um, it is a stage show that you're in for the sake of the stage show as the teacher, as the university. So, therefore, you have to have a preconceived plan to say, I need to play a certain role. Same way if we were to create a Hollywood picture, everyone would stand up and say, I need to be this character here. But now, Kenny, didn't they right. always this in kindergarten or in nursery school, uh, roll your boat gently down, merrily, 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 life is nothing but a dream. Mm. But a dream, but mm. a dream, right. See, it, now, we pull this illusionary thing, right, in this context, in this particular context, what it tells us as life being this merrily, merrily dream is it, 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 that's actually an affirmation to remind you that this is a dream, when you start to take it seriously, is actually uh, 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 life is but a dream as you roll down the stream. And, right. and ultimately, in this context, what it's trying to tell you is nothing you can do here or nothing being done to you is, is, is ha actually happening. It's a dream. So when, we, when, our big, when our greatest greatness is we were slaves and they were this and they were that, yeah, we're supposed to complain and talk about it and decode it in the context because that's what we came to do as a part of the script, mm -hmm. as a part of the movie scene. Right. But um, as you go home and, 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 and you understand from a metaphysical or occult understanding, really life is but a dream. Nothing really happened. 
So now there's also something called a more, a more uh, fati or fati, something like that. Um, right, the love the, of of your faith. Right, yeah, right. It's 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 it's, it's the it's a Latin for basically a mentality to love your faith. So when you hear it, 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 it is basically wise men who said there are certain things that you well in the Bible they they tell you that that you get that line give me the power to change the things I can and the strength to accept the things I can. You know that, that little bullshit. But if you if you take that to his metaphysical understanding, what it's trying to tell you is there are certain things that will never change based upon fate, and then there there's a layer of things that that are perceived as change, right, or perceived as under your control, like which deodorant you pick, which toothpaste you use, how often you brush your teeth. See, really, and then then this brings in magic. Well, what are we doing with magic? Magic only changes your perspective on an event. So, for instance, if I, if, if Aleem and I both have no money, $30 may be a lot to me and 300 may be to him. So Aleem does a ritual, gets 300 I get my $30. I'm looking at it as magic. Aleem is looking at it like I'm a, that's chump change. Mm-hmm. So his perspective is different, even though we both, did whatever we needed to do to get whatever we felt we needed. And that's what we talked about last week. Your perception, and if you watch that Kumari thing um, that I was talking about, and if people who missed the show last week, you need to go back and download. I talked about a show uh, on Netflix called Kumari, and it's real interesting, and it's about perception. So the way you perceive things is what you're changing in magic. Um, or this laws of attraction shit that, that everyone seems to be hung up on. But your fate will always be the same. So, be, for instance, I came to be a teacher. That's going to happen no matter what I do. No matter what toothpaste I use, no matter what girlfriend I have or think I have, um, or, or, or what my living conditions are, what my job is, um, there's a certain thing that you cannot extract. So when I sit back and go, one time a nigga almost shot me, but the gun wouldn't go off. I'm magical. One time a nigga was supposed to do that, um, and that didn't happen. I was almost fell off the bridge. I had diabetes, but it went away. Um, it's, uh, it's perceived that you did some kundalini work, you did some echinacea work, you did some magical work. That's the perception. But the fate is you came here with a task that cannot be taken away from you. That's the theory now. That you've been ta- you 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 come to teach, and no matter what happens on this planet, you will never die until you complete that mission, because that supernatural power, which is nothing more than yourself, that put it into put into action, will uh, uh, will it, it it's working on a higher technology than what you perceive to be your free will. So. Now, if you understand this theory, and, under, and, and, and like I said, I wish I had the scientific name where you can go through it all, you know, because you got, you got decent white men who's, who's copied this study from black folks and made it their own, so it's official. And um, <laughs> so they, um, you have to start factoring things like slavery as a whole. So in that, when you factor, it makes more sense when you sit around and go, the shit that we say, how come they were in the caves three minutes ago and all of a sudden they run in the world? What does that mean? That is only by our design. Mm-hmm. They, they, based upon our very own words of their lack of sophistication, it is impossible for them to just eat you know, just, just they was just eating dogs, and all of a sudden they're world conquerors. It doesn't make any sense unless it's a fate or a destiny or a stage play that we're doing, a role that we're playing. Mm-hmm. So that so to love your fate is not necessarily to fall in love with being a slave, but to un, for, understand 
and embrace the process. Now, this is said in different ways. If you went to Harvard, you would be falling out saying, and, you know, oh, my goodness, I'm in Harvard. It's, it's the worst of the worst. It's, let's pretend. It's the hardest school in the world, and, and it, you got to be a genius to get in, and you work twice as hard as Spelman or whatever the fuck. And, um, but then when you graduate, it's like you forget about the hard work, and then you see the reward of it. So it's the same kind of thing. Um, we're working towards the graduation from humanity. Um, and what I find is us complaining about our fate more than actually embracing it and, and, and working that shit. You get what I'm saying? Working it to, to, to the and, – and, and you kind of got to get it in a certain way. Um, you, and really it's said metaphysically when you say, are you able to laugh at yourself? <laughs> because when you're able to laugh at yourself or don't take yourself so seriously, you understand – there's an underground love that 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 you're embracing even in your ignorance. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, when you take yourself serious like that, it, it you you fell for the hype. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right. You fell for the hype. So when I see this commercial, twelve years a slave, and then there was that one scene that Dawson lady, I was picking the cotton all day. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. It, you know, it's like, it's like, on one level, it, 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 you know, you, you understand you're not oblivious to the fact that this is hardcore oppression. Right. But, but on a metaphysical and occult level, you have to enjoy the process as well, and and that's kind of hard. You get what I'm saying? You, you, you uh, and but we do it on a. a how we enjoy the ignorance sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we, do, if you listen to comedians, they're actually talking about a deep level of ignorance, but we're laughing at ourselves. It's just a, the ignorance that we accept, you know what I'm saying? Shit between a man and a woman. See, but by the time they get into that slavery and all that other shit, you know what I'm saying? That's where the book stops. And and it's not that I'm not necessarily saying joke about it, but somewhere in your heart you have to change your perspective on it so the so because that's all you really got exactly. you know what I'm saying yeah. that's all you really got is the the ability to change your perspective you are not changing your fate you are not changing black people's destiny we are we are clearly doing something that we determined see if you have faith in yourself I'm a god I'm a goddess then you, why don't you have faith that something we, we're doing to go through this Holocaust must have a genius level to it? If you accept yourself as a melanated genius, the beginning and the mother and father, beginning of end of all things, then why can't you accept that slavery, uh, this this hard label, this ghetto, and all the shit that we're, we're complaining about constantly is a part of a bigger plan that we have put in motion that as a human we may not understand, but but all of this faith in in what it is you are po- uh, 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 have as a power, there must be something greater underneath, behind the veil that is working. And if you have faith in yourself as a god, as as all of these things that you say you are, then you should understand clearly what we're doing here is is actually a bigger. It, it is bigger than than the complaints that you have that you've been uh, 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 constantly harping on. Mm-hmm. So, if you if you understand the difference between what you can what you perceive is what you can control and what your fate is, you, deja vu is nothing more than confirmation of your fate. Because deja vu is like I did it before or I've been here before. It's because all that tells you is you're just on you're on your mark as an actor. You're on you're, you're 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 at stage left. That's exactly where you're supposed to be. And there are certain things that are key. There are certain things that are key in your life that you know. You you when when it when it's happened or it's about to happen, you know it will change your life forever. You know what I'm saying? Like there are things in my memory. For instance, with Khadijah, 
When I was young, I was a thumb sucking motherfucker. I was in I was I could get awards for thumb sucking. You know what I'm saying? I was that nigga. But I had this um little fetish. I used to always grab my sister's hands because she had these rough kind of hands and and you know, rub her hands while I used to suck my thumb. To up to an obscene level. You get what I'm saying? So I said, hey, could you give my motherfucking hand back? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, um, you know, that was my shit. Come here for a second. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, and, and I've never in my life felt hands that was that comfortable <laughs> until I met Khadijah. I said, oh, right. shit, I get it now. And so I said, I was like, what the fuck? And, she, and Khadijah's hands, she's a massage therapist. And she was like, my shit is kind of rough. I'm like, you don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> now I get it. So in the template, I'm sitting there going, there's something in my memory, in my DNA that remembers Khadijah to, the, to that level. Now, it gets deeper now with Khadijah. When I was young, I used to go to sleep, and this woman used to get in my bed. And I, re- I used to be able to give details on this woman. I used to tell my mother, there's this lady that gets in my bed and sleeps with me. She's like, uh, that's just called a wet dream. I was like, there's, there's fucking nothing wet. You know what I'm saying? And, and I used to tell her, I, I used to describe her to a T. Her eyes look like this. Her lips look like this. So all my entire life, I remember this lady. As soon as I seen Khadijah, that was the lady. I said, oh, that's the right. motherfucker that I used to get in my bed. So I already knew. I fucking think I'm going to move to Atlanta and can't drive. You know what I'm saying? That's got to be some powerful shit. So, 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 okay, we could say all the labels soulmates and twin flames. That's obvious. Let's get that out the way. But, but what I'm trying to say is in my genetic memory, in my genetic memory, there's so much, there's such a connection between me and Khadijah, such a destiny of being together. That's what fate is. So so it makes me understand, like, no matter what I did, no matter where I went, I would be with that woman. No matter what I did, no matter what happens. You get what I'm saying? So per, it, now if we were just looking at my perception, I tried this girl and that girl and that girl was in this. And I could say, and I tried with that girl and I was with that girl for five years. It sounds like I'm going through a relationship. So I found the one. That's how we perceive it. But if we understand, like I understand metaphysically in the cult, it was just waiting to happen. It was just a matter of time before we was reunited. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. A matter of time. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it, it explained a lot. And like I, I mean, for years, I'm like, why the fuck do I like her hands? I can't stand my sister. To this day, I can't stand her. Not her hands, though. Them shit's is fucking pristine. <laughs> and um, and I could never figure this shit out. I was like, where does that come from? Like, like it, it, you know, it's some shit. Shit that's like, where the fuck does that come from? And and like I said, as soon as I felt Khadija's hands, it made it all made sense. Mm-hmm. So there are things that um, so there are things that you cannot um, divorce yourself from. You get what I'm saying? You, you, it, it, it looks as if I had a lot of girlfriends or went through some girlfriends or it didn't work out. So that's why we're with that, and it was just it just just. I just happened to meet her and all of that kind of shit. Nah, it was it was going to happen. There are certain key things in your life that's going to happen because without her, I wouldn't be able to make it to Atlanta. And then there's a whole new de- destiny in Atlanta. You get what I'm saying? So, so in other words, my fate is going to get me in Atlanta. It's just a matter of how 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 you get there. Mm-hmm. So you may get there kicking and screaming, or you may get here in a, in a golden chariot but you're going to get to certain key locations in your life. And yeah. that's based upon fate, so in embracing your fate. So so I think it's just something for us to think about when we're complaining about shit that, we, first of all, we have no control of. I cannot begin to tell you how much shit. I, I always end the conversation when niggas try to get deep on me. Yeah, we need to do this. And then I said, well, what are you going to do about it? And then no one's never even thought about that shit. Mm-hmm. They're, they're spraying chemtrails. Well, what the fuck are you going to do about it? Um, we just know now. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm 
<laughs> you know, I get it because this is about knowing. But like I said, knowing and complaining are two different things. You get what I'm saying? Knowing, decoding, and complaining. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm all for uh, uh, spreading the, the tricks and pulling the veil back. But, you know, if every day I'm sitting around going, hey, nigga, in those vaccinations, like, <laughs> then I'm, then I'm not getting, yeah, we know they're giving us vaccinations. know that, right. I'm not getting anyway. So you need to embrace that they're doing it. But see, and, and I've said this, and people never thought about it either way. If they got 10 things that they're doing that we complain about, and then you're always coming with number 11, the mere fact that they have number 11 means 10 things didn't work. That means the shit is not working. You deal with shit that works. You know what I'm saying? They deal with shit that works. So if they have something that works, it'll be one fucking thing they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. One thing. The most effective one thing they're doing is Jesus Christ. And that shit is wearing off. You know what I'm saying? Yes, exactly. And that shit is wearing off. So all of that to say, um, you know, we need to, to, to embrace the faith. You know what I mean? Understand and have faith in the fact that there is a there is a higher power working and we are that higher power that put it in the work. We made this agreement to do this work. Now, there's a lot of theories on why we did it as well. You know what I mean? It's a study thing. It's a, once we do it, we never have to do it again. You know, the whole object is to probe and do every single thing in the universe, and there's even stories that this is one of the most uh, wretched realities to deal with and actually we're doing it because we are actually the older ones who have the ability to actually go through it and come out of it. So I mean there's, there's, I mean, there's a lot that even goes on with that concept of why, why we're doing it. But we need to understand before we even get down to the whys that it's us that made this choice. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I mean, did you ever really think of the alternative? That Because if we didn't make this choice and everything starts spiritually, that means there's white spirits somewhere in the universe that has the power to oppress you. We know that these motherfuckers were created in a cave. Under our DNA. There's, there's not, there, 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 I mean, Elijah Muhammad has, has thoroughly taught that. And 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 they, shit, they they co-signed with it with the island of Dr. Moreau. There's a movie called The Island that that's encoded. You can watch right now. That's new. Uh, Frankenstein is the story of their creation, and so they have nothing in the universe that can oppress you to the point of where where you're this slave and and they still need to they still need to kill you so they can fucking have a good death. We need to we need to read between the lines, see exactly where they are, and stop empowering them with our minds, embrace our fate, and understand from our perspective what the fuck um, we need to deal with this from our perspective. We're, do, we're dealing too much from their perspective. So it's something to ponder. I wish I would have had the scientific name. I uh, see if I can come up with it. I'm just so damn busy. So we're gonna. I guess we'll get to the Q and A. And um, first, uh, we get all the the infomercial out the way. Um, I'm going to start making calls this week or the end of this week uh, to set up class appointments. So now is the time to get in for the next class cycle. If you don't know about this by now, which you should, I offer uh, basic magic classes. It's a four-week course, very reasonable price. I've been doing it uh, for a while now. This is the 10th cycle coming up. Um, like I said, you don't have to take my word for it. What you can do is email some of um, some people who took the class and see how it has changed their lives, empowered them, gave them a whole uh, 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 gave them a whole new outlook on how to change their perspective and control their environment as best they could. Um, like I said, uh, you know we're going to start soon, so now is the time to get in. As always, I have my herb packs. If you haven't heard about the herb packs, um, I don't know what planet you've been on, but right. these, are all natural, these are all natural herbs that open up the pineal. It's medicine for your third eye. 
So those of you having problems sleeping, meditating, focusing, focus in your meditation, and there's at least 10 other things that people have said, 10 to 20 other things people have said smoking the herb pack has done for them. Um, in terms of their spirituality, this is something is very still very cheap after all this time, something you need to get your hands on. And if you're scared to smoke it, you can also, you have the option of using it as a tea. There's different types of herb packs. There's things for love, for vision, for dreaming, um, for hexing, so on and so forth. What you need to do is email me at panicpack at hotmail.com to get a list of all the stuff I sell. There's also meditation CDs, spiritual baths, um, all sorts of knickknacks and things that I've sell over the years that um, has come through as breakthroughs through lectures. So you need to get a list if you haven't got a list, or get or, or get another herb pack if you are because I know you're getting low. So uh, and um, I also talk about a good friend of mine, Jerry Miller. Jerry Miller, um, what he works with is Oregon. And Orgon is a very powerful substance that you need in your house. It does everything. You put it in front of your microwave, <clears throat> in your tub, um, um, just around your person. To uh, it helps with negative ions, which is basically uh, basically uh, all the computers and microwaves and TVs and all that stuff that's frying you are positive icons. Uh, positive ions. So negative ions are what we build. You negative ions are found in nature. So that feeling you get when you're on a picnic or on a mountain or at the beach or in the forest, that feeling of nature and calm are actually negative ions at work. So one of the things that help promote negative ions in the house is organ energy. And um, like I said, he crafts it um, to a master to a master level, um, uh, pyramids, any sorts of charms. Um, and I believe if you have a certain charm, he'll be able to uh, uh, take care of it, add the organ to it, and, 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 and there's this uh, hard substance that makes the shape. You know, he'll, he, he, he's able to put a thing in the thing to make the thing for you. I think he does that um, for special orders. But, I mean, the sky's the limit. Talk to him. You can contact Jerry Miller on Facebook. And if you don't have Facebook or can't get him on Facebook, just shoot me an email, and I'll forward you his info. Uh, shoot me an email at panicpack at hotmail.com. And, of course, there's com where you can get a shitload of things. One of the best things, I believe, you can get a whole bunch of stuff on um, a lean site. But one of the best things I like is uh, because of what people always ask me for are chakra stones. And, and, and a, a good stone package of uh, 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 crystals for the chakras. So I know he has that plus candles and a whole bunch of other shit. So you need to go check his site, you know what I'm saying? Because remember, all of this stuff keeps us afloat. And I want to shout out Bobby and Linda, Brother Bobby, um, and Sister Kali. Sister Sandra for setting up his healing fund. If you don't know where that is, email me and I'll send you all the info you need for that. If you missed um, Bobby's update, I'll send you the link, which is which is on my YouTube occult lectures on YouTube, where you can where you can hear from Bobby himself. So he'll give you an update of what's going on, and that's already up to like eleven thousand hits of people who already listen to what Bobby got to say. So much love to Bobby, and, he, you know, he still needs your help. And, you know, you guys have been coming through like champs for him, so I'm, I'm real, is real happy to see that. Like I said, now that the infomercial is over, we'll get to the Q&A, and let's get busy. Remember, panicpack at hotmail.com. I guess we'll get to the Q&A. Yes, we have area code 601. 601, you're on the line. Hello? Peace, yo, yo. Peace, brother. What's going on with it after? How y'all doing, man? 
Oh, right, right. But you know what I'm saying? I've just been sitting back there listening to, uh, you know, uh, Panic Man. He's dropping the real signs. I already know what you was coming from, talking about, man, it's, you know, uh, you just was dropping that, um, that narcissism and stuff like that. But, you know, I just was really calling in just to, you know what I'm saying, just to, what I had been feeling in, you know what I'm saying, in, in my spirit is, you know what I'm saying, I feel like these motherfuckers have been really basically dropping the ritual on our ass, you know what I'm saying, all this year from, you know what I'm saying, from the uh, Star Trek coming into the darkness, from the Superman mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to the uh, mm-hmm. to the movie, to the movie Thor, all that right there, even though, you know what I'm saying, you know, you know anybody that's country, you already know you need to be rooting for the bad guy anyway it go, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, because mm-hmm. they're basically trying mm-hmm. to set, set you down that's coming down the tool for us. And, I, you know what I'm saying, I just want to put out that to the community, and to the people out there, you know what I'm saying, I think they about to try to drop the bomb on us with this one right here that's 47 um, um, ruling with, uh, you know, they done brought their, they done brought their Jesus back out, Keanu Reeves, the guy that was up in the Matrix and all that right there. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see, you know what I'm saying, could this subconsciously be missing with what we got coming down the tube for, for us, you know what I'm saying, because basically, you know what I'm saying, I, I, you know, what I feel in my spirit is most that this shit done went too totally mental, you know what I'm saying, and not physical mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I think that they're mm-hmm. trying to tap to, you know, because we all just one mind. I ain't, you know, ain't no difference between me and you with just our mind playing tricks on us. I'm you, you, me, and all that right there. Are they you know, trying to trick the subconscious mind to make this think that this, that this change that's coming down, that's coming down the tube for us to make us think that it's bad by tapping into the higher mind and tricking us because, you know, all the meteorites that's falling from out the sky, and there's nothing that's going on at a board that ain't really going on inside of us. And what I'm looking at it is, is a graduation, you know what I'm saying? Because like you just said, though, you know, it's just like a prison planet, you know what I'm saying? Everything is mm-hmm. everything. Exactly. You know, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing new done up under the sun. And I'm telling my brother, you so know, we're meeting on the net. So I'm like, it's time to get the fuck from up under the sun. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, me also knowing that death ain't really death. Death is nothing but a, trans, you know, nothing but a transformation or uh, 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 graduation of going into something else and stuff like that. And I basically, what I feel in my spirit is that this planet here, the planet is the planet is going from something from a physical to a totally a spiritual entity and where, you know what I'm saying, this planet ain't going to even be the same anymore. But what I'm feeling is in my spirit that I need to be, Doing my thing, you know what I'm saying? Because I, because what I'm looking at is I need to be doing my thing and help this thing come on and happen. Because I'm not, mm-hmm. scared, I'm not scared of you know what I'm saying. What they trying to um, what they trying to stop? Because just like the elves and I don't know if y'all checked the movie Thor out or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? They were talking to them. They just really came on, really talking about the dark matter and the dark elves and stuff like that. We already know. You know what I'm saying? The L, that's an ancient word for the God, which really L, ain't no but Elohim and stuff like that right there. How this universe and stuff was made from a stolen seed, the Yada Bop had sold and came down and made this whole holographic universe. And you know what I'm saying? And for me, I'm just like, man, shit. I think that they're really going to war with us subconsciously. And you know what I'm saying? Hey, I think it's hey, to be You You plan on breathing anytime soon? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like, let me tell you, you you you're right on point. You right on point. Um, and one of the and I'm glad you bring it up. One of the best movies this year was that Thor shit. And oh, I thought it was gonna be it. fucking. I thought it was gonna be a phenomenal flop. They had to drag me to that shit because the first one I thought was, was extremely corny. You know what right. I mean? But they went hard on melanin. Like, uh, yeah. they went hard on the ancient melanin, you know what I'm saying? And actually, I'm going to watch it again, and maybe I'll talk about it, you know, where I could see where I remember it or whatever, um, where I could get, go through some um, details. But they was they was dropping in on that thought. And in that whole year, they were doing a lot of darkness movies, Into the Darkness. And I, I talk about the time. It was right after... Um, um, right after 2000, when nothing happened, they had all of these movies about darkness lined up. You know what I'm saying? And they had a couple of movies. I can't remember. I talked about it at the time where black people were in it, and it was a new birth for us. So they, 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 they weren't really doing nothing as much as they were uh, giving commentary 
on their perspective. From their perspective, there was a dark world coming. And, like, uh, Snoop Dogg had that, what's the, remember that documentary? That I, That's one I do remember, that Jamaican documentary. Uh, it was, like, rejuvenated or renew or reborn or some shit like that. I had and, a um, so, um, it, 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 it was, uh, hold on, I'll tell you exactly what it was. Let me see. IMDB.com. Like, uh, and it was like, and whatever it was at the time, I talked about it. And uh, let me see. Uh, I talked about it, and all the black people had movies. Uh, all, all, all the black people had movies about new birth, because that's it was a new birth for us. Spiritually, they they kept it where it was, and for them, all this shit was turning dark. You know what I'm saying? From their perspective, right. you get what I'm saying. They're fighting us, which is the dark world. Us, oh, right, right. For us, it was it was the new light that was coming in. Um, hold on, I'm gonna tell you in a second what it was. Um, for us, it was the new light coming in. He got so much shit. Um, like uh, producer, actor, writer, composer, director, self. It was it was the new uh, uh, our new shit was coming in. So so it was we had a lot of shit that was like. Reborn and rebirth, so we was we were doing good. Them on the other hand, you know what I'm saying? See, right, but you know what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is, you know what I'm saying. Um, I know, you know what I'm saying. Like I said, like I said, I know that what they moving on is just not happening because they making it seem like you know what I'm saying. This right here was coming in is you know what I'm saying is bad, but you know what I'm saying. In order to get to the true realm of life, we got to make it through that void. They, they, they've always been doing that. I mean, what they're going to say is good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, good. Let the niggas come. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, we've been talking about that for years. Mm-hmm. The only thing that they really have is uh, uh, mind control. So right. the, exactly. one of the greatest tools of mind control have always been the movies. Right. And in fact, in fact, um, yeah, I can't find that. I don't know where it's at. Uh, I mean, but it, it, it's, it's his latest roster move. When he became a roster, it, it was it was a uh, somebody probably going to write it in the chat room. Um, re, rebirth or reborn or whatever the fuck it was called. Anyway, um, when uh, uh, a while ago, like I said, we been dealt with this is something that, that I've talked about years ago. There, there was a channel I got that the only thing that basically was working were movies. That That is the most, after all the chemtrails, right. vaccinations and all of that, the only thing that was actually doing justice was movies. And if they turn that shit off, um, well, really, because, you know, there was the whole thing, oh, they're going to send an EMF, EMF wave and shut all the lights on. I'm like, you think they're going to shut all the lights and keep a bunch of niggas in darkness? That's the worst thing. Yeah, they're, the they're, worst. Gonna, they're trying to keep a light on. And right. So, yes, sir. So, mm-hmm. so, that's, another, that's another thing I had been feeling in my spirit, too. I was checking out um, Dr. Adam Dean thing about the sun slipping and stuff like that, and he had just struck me real heavy in my spirit. Now, how, you, how you kept on saying they worried about their satellites, they worried about their satellites and stuff like that right there. I, you know what I'm saying? The spirit told me that we don't know how in depth that this lockdown technology is. Talking about even us as in the conscious community, we don't, you know what I'm saying? We don't even know how in depth that it's affecting us, even though that we're. Man, that, 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 shit, that shit ain't working. If that shit was working, <laughs> we wouldn't be having this conversation today. Niggas, yes. niggas fail. You know what I'm saying? They shit go offline, then, you know what I'm saying? Shit, I just think, you know what I'm saying? This shit go offline, bro. God damn it. They hold a little green. Well, look, 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 just always remember this. Melon. Melanin is chaos in the blood. Melanin is always changing. So whatever they got you on, the melanin adapts, and that's that's what they can't figure out. And they right. said that uh, in what movie was it? Uh, no, they said it in True Blood. In in the last True Blood, he was trying to get the fairy blood, and right. and each time we take out the fairy blood, he said the shit becomes dormant when we take it out the body. So they've been okay. trying to get melanin out the body to figure out the science since since it began. That's what all of these movies are fucking about. A dark substance has returned. 
darkness. They tr- they've been trying to figure out melanin forever. It'll never happen because it's a substance from an older, more ancient world. And when they're right. in the properties, they, they have no scientific way of isolating it down here once it's outside the body. So, right. so that's, why, they, that's why they need you to, to, to do the work for them. And you have. That's why you're making rap music for them, fucking country blues and all those doorknobs and fucking <laughs> street signs for them and all sorts of shit because they need you to function. So all you have is a bunch of mind control over masses, right. which is failing because there are more people who are becoming conscious. What we ne- need not to do is worry about the whole masses of people. Deal with the consciousness. You get what I'm saying? Because, and Bobby Hammond pointed this out, what white people understand is, see, white people don't spend a whole bunch of time trying to make everybody white succeed. They understand that it only takes 1% of them to rule this right. world. Mm-hmm. So the conscious need to worry about the motherfucking conscious. The conscious. Right. The dead people will do what fucking what people who run the world say. So you, you shouldn't waste no time worrying about if satellites got them on lockdown. It's supposed to. That's their fate. That's their destiny. That's their role down here. Your role is not to be fucking involved in that bullshit. It's that's the perception. Right. That, that's 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 the part that you choose to indulge in. You need to indulge in your consciousness. Of course they're going to try to do that in movies. What the fuck would you do if you were them? It, it seems like they <laughs> run scared because they done dropped so many of these movies. It seems like they done dropped so many of these movies and they ain't even got them and trying to hide. They ain't, dro- they ain't dropping shit. They just copying your story. You got you to put in perspective what the fuck they doing. They're not dropping nothing. Nothing. They're just fucking okay. telling your story over and over again. You just need to be able, they're telling it from their perspective. What you need to do is be able to see your perspective, which supersedes their bullshit fear. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I was just checking about the Superman and stuff like that, how they had put the people in the cryo spaces and they sunk them out to the prison planet. And then, you know what I'm saying, about the dude Kane up in the uh up in the uh Star Trek about, you know what I'm saying, he was trying to wake up his people, you know what I'm saying, and they was in cryo spaces and stuff like that and he was trying to wake up his people. But you know what I'm saying, they no, he, was saying trying to, he was trying to wake up the pineal gland. The pineal has seventy two chakras on it, or the seventy two helpers of set. He had how many capsules in his crew? They are seventy two. Seventy two. Seventy two. He was right. rep- calm representing the pineal gland. It's your fucking story. You get what I'm saying? It's not him dropping shit. It's them copying your fucking story, your numbers, over and over again. You get what I'm saying? But it just made, what I'm trying to say like, just be like Avenger X. Root for the bad guy. Okay. Root for the bad guy. That's wow. what it is. You just gotta, you, you, look, look, it, the masses of people are going to vote for Kirk, uh, uh, are going to be cheerleading for Captain Kirk. You already know what time it is. What the fuck do you care what they're doing? You, you get what I'm saying? I right. enjoyed that movie because, shit, I like, I like Star Trek. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it doesn't work for me. Your mind control doesn't work. I'm not worried about what they're doing. You get what I'm saying? I understand right. and can decode what they're doing. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a Dif- difference. Worrying about it is different from decoding it or understanding it. You get what I'm saying? So I understand it, you know what I'm saying? I see where they're coming from. But you got to look at the law of polarity, which is which is one of the laws of Tahuti. And it's basically, in a nutshell, the, the ability to look at both sides of the coin, which, puts mm-hmm. you, which, which is how you change your polarity when you see things up the middle. So instead of picking a side, well, I'm a black chess player or a white chess player, and this is my side because I'm black, because, yeah, that's one perspective, but you got to be able to see it from both angles. And then you become the observer as opposed to the, the goddamn puppet or the pawn. You get what I'm saying? Right. That's what they're talking about. So I'm able right. to sit there and observe these movies and tell you what they're doing, but I'm not having this emotional outburst about, look what they're trying to do, and look what they're they got there. They ain't doing shit. You know what I'm saying? They're telling you. They don't even have a story to tell, brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Right. They don't even have a. They, there's nothing for them to drop. All they're doing is regurgitating your shit over and over again. Well, like the lady in that, the that movie. That sounds like a failure to me. 
That sounds like a failure to me. Even the fucking boxers will tell you, when you go into the ring, you ain't worried about what that nigga's going to do. It's about what you're going to do to that nigga. They ain't doing nothing. They ain't doing nothing telling you our story, and we sitting around here complaining about that because it's not working. Well, well, we're with this thing and me with them dropping them movies. Come on now, come on now, come on now. Come on now. You, you, come on now, when niggas went to the movies and seen Magneto and was cheerleading, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't even that conscious and he was on his side. They right. they on a thin line, you know what I'm saying? They on a thin line. Right, but they're telling me, like I say, they're telling me that I need to be goddamn linking up with their energy that's coming in, doing, doing what I need to do, doing my black magic and bringing this shit on in. That's, they know that's, what I, that's what I feel in my heart. Man, that shit, that shit. That's, you feel that in that ass. You feel that in your ass, too. You know what I'm saying? Because there ain't no other choice. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no other choice. <laughs> ain't no other choice. What, 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 what you here for? You know what I'm saying? Like that, what you here yeah. for? Yeah, they all right. feel like I don't got no what it is. I'm like, all right, that's what you scared of, God damn it. That's, that's what I'm waking up with. But I, I like the what you said, looking at both sides of the coin. That's just like the lady in the matrix said, said she was like, we're all here to do what we're all here to do. You know what I'm saying? They right. got a job to right. do. Just like I got a job to do. You know what I'm saying? But I see, right. I see you don't oh, got to be inside boy. the box going for crazy and going mad. You can just be like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? You just looking at it from both sides, you know? Because I went through right. all the racism and things. I hate white smoke beef, man. But I just, you know, this shit there is a waste of fucking energy. Yeah, I, I mean, you just gotta, you just gotta put on your 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 perspective glasses and 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 do what you need to to do to raise up your energy. The joyous thing is what is in you has nothing to do with th- has nothing to do with that. Uh, uh, early on, this lady told me this shit. She was like, "One day you'll forget about white people." I'm like, "Fuck them!" And I don't care about them. And whitey this and whitey that. Now I totally get what she was talking about. I don't need nothing but they do to 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 offset what it is that I am. And before it was like, well, I'm good because they're bad. I'm I'm good because they did this. They they eat their dogs and and we have our dogs sit outside. You know what I'm saying? That 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 was the whole thing. And she was like, well, you you ain't gonna need you ain't gonna need that shit. You study enough. I'm like, I don't need it now. But I'm saying, but I see it. I didn't need it then, but. I'm more was wrapped up in that bullshit of of yeah he's this and that he's the beast and he's in the kid yeah okay that's true but that don't if that's what you're using to make yourself special is is kind of you know light in the ass compared to uh, you know what I'm saying you've been here for millions of years he just he just got here to even compare yourself to that is a fucking is dishonorable. Like to 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 call a white man the devil is almost is is such a compliment for him, cause you know he just got here. Like to even put him in that even to even put him in that role is like nigga, you know what I'm saying? You 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 putting you putting an extra in the role of uh, of a lifetime of Denzel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This nigga playing Malcolm X, but he was an extra the other day. Nah, he's got he's got too much. He's got too a long way to go. You get what I'm saying? A long way to go for you to even compare yourself to that. If you really know what time it is, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm all for calling a, a clown a clown, but you know what I mean. You know, more or less, it's about tell me something magical about you. I don't want to hear nothing about them. You know. All the goddamn time. Tell me something about you. What you got going on? I agree. You know what I'm saying? What, what, um, did, what did you break through with? Right. Um, thank you, brother, for mm-hmm. um, calling in. We're going to go to the next caller, 919-919. You live on the air. Hello? Peace. Yes, peace. Yes, sir. Wow, I didn't know I pressed one. How's it going? Hey, it's right, man. Well, brother. I was just enjoying the show. Um, good, good. I don't have really a question yet. Oh, but um, the movie was reincarnated. The one you were talking about was Snoop Dogg. Yeah, reincarnated. Yeah, somebody put up thanks, thanks for that. Reincarnated. And it was like at the time when I was talking about it, 
It was like two more movies like that. It was like reincarnated. It was, I can't I, for the life of me. I can't remember what it is, but around that era, huh? I was saying there was another one called Cloud Atlas. Also, Spider-Man. Do you have melanin on the Yeah, Spider-Man was the melanin one. Cloud Atlas Nine was 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 real real kooky. Like uh, the same people who did Matrix did it. And I'm glad you brought that up. It was about uh, fate and past lives and purpose. I'm glad you brought that up. It goes right along with what we were talking about. It was just a, I just think they did a terrible job of it. Um, they and did. then when I when when, when I watched um, the DVD extras, you see, because remember, for, well, two things: the Wachowski brothers did it, and one of them had a sex change, and yeah. so. That's what took. A, that's why you haven't heard from us, and they were getting sued. But they got this nigga in drag <laughs> talking about the movie. I couldn't get past that shit. You know what I'm saying? They was giving. He was beautiful today. I'm like, nigga, you just was a nigga. And you know what I'm saying? He's like, oh, thank you. And that, but they were talking about some of the things that they were doing in the movies, and you know they were doing the little subconscious things. And but they were so vague. Like for instance, uh, there was a warrior, like you know, because they were there was the same characters doing lives over and over and over again. It was there was uh, uh, some the warriors of the Africans had an African dress on. Then later on, the the guy in another scene had a robe with the same print that was so vague, and they would talk. They were saying, well, we did that to do this connection and that and this connection and that connection. I'm saying that these connections were so fucking vague, unlike The Matrix, that um, I'm like, this was a terrible fucking movie. And, and ultimately what they were saying was that uh, you were actually, which, which to me would be so fucked up, would be like uh, your your choices. Um, create your future. So, so let's say me and Aleem never met on any world and any planet. We meet, we do these shows, and based upon our relationship now, we are now interconnected through life. So life keeps going on, and based upon our unfinished business or business that we enjoy, we have now have a new, perhaps on a different planet, but but in a different scheme of things. Now they showed with. Uh, Tom Hanks' character, if you look through his characters, subtly, he was an evil man until his last life he was a he was that wise, good man. So they were showing people actually getting good, good, uh, bad to good, good to wise. If you remember, he was um, tormenting, in one scene, tormenting the guy and poisoning him. Originally, that guy had a top hat on in, in, in the first scene. So in the last scene, that deity that looked like Baron Somni with the top hat was torturing him in his, in his, with his spirit, meaning that he did something bad to this guy in another life, and in this life mm-hmm. that this guy was torturing him back, which, which is something Mitchell Gibson said he actually witnessed. And he, uh, Mitchell Gibson said as a psychiatrist, um, he was uh, – there was this white guy who came into his office who was tormented. And Mitchell Gibson, who could see spirits, said there was a spirit on him standing right next to him saying, telling him to kill himself and all of this shit. Oh. So Mitchell Gibson said he asked the spirit, uh, he, said he asked the spirit, uh, why are you tormenting this guy? He said, in another life, he said, this guy was my slave owner and he raped my wife and my kids. And then Mitchell Gibson said, well, your wife and your kids are right there. He said they moved on. He said then the spirit walked off with him and the dude was cured. This is a story Mitchell Gibson tells. Now, basically, so you've seen this in this movie with Tom Hanks. So it, it was a terrible movie, and, and they made the point that, that, like I said, your lives are intertwined and you're weaving, you're weaving this web that, that, uh, that keeps continuing. I'm like, oh, my God, that's fucking terrible. You know what I'm saying? You're just doing shit over and over and no. over. You're just getting mad do-overs. Now, from a white perspective, it gives them hope of everlasting life that they're, they're, that they're striving for. 
Now we understand. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> we understand and have a different perspective on everlasting life. That is not physical. You get what I'm saying? And that what they made it seem like is um, the shit that you do, even out of ignorance, you can pay for, which is something they uh, relate to karma. So I could do some ignorant shit to Aleem and have to have to deal with a whole fucking lifetime again just to balance out that ignorance. Oh, what a fucking, that is hell. You know what I'm saying? That is absolute hell. Because as much cookies and shit that I stole, not how many times I, I, I snuck some high seed out the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You ain't never, you ain't never leaving this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just off of snack stealing. You know what I'm saying? Just off of snack stealing. As much as who the fuck ate all the cookies? You know what I'm saying? Wasn't, uh, wasn't you know, I don't even like oatmeal. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, you know, due to the laws of my yacht, nigga, you are getting eaten by every. Yeah, I'd be scared. You know what I'm saying? Due to the laws of my yacht. <laughs> and it's like, oh, man, I ain't never leaving this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? This nigga robbed a gumball machine. <laughs> he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> ain't going a motherfucking place, nigga. <laughs> oh, man. Remember when you lost the remote? Yeah, you had to do another lifetime, nigga. <laughs> oh, man. What the fuck, nigga? Remember when you went to that chick's house, wiped your ass on her shower curtain? Yep. <laughs> you had another life, nigga. You got a whole nother life that's coming, nigga. <laughs> oh, shit. You got to be a bus driver. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking, he ain't never get, he ain't never getting out of this shit. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm glad. That, that's a, that's an unhopeful message. <laughs> How Alice Nine was a fucking downer, man. <laughs> That was a fucking downer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was looking at that shit going, oh, my God. If this, shit is, if this shit is happening for real. This is a fucking downer. You know what I'm saying? And fucking DJ Full Moon, this nigga got a tape of him electrocuting himself, yo. <laughs> what do you do that for? <laughs> I just had to bring that up. What, like, you need to answer. I, I, I hope your phone is on because... Like, this nigga King Cook sent me his, I'm like, who the fuck is electrocuting themselves like that? He said, yeah, that's DJ Full Moon. This nigga just said, <laughs> it just fell out. <laughs> what the fuck you do that for? <laughs> like, like, what the fuck did you do that for, yo? You know what I'm saying? By the laws of my art, you got to do it for a lifetime. <laughs> By the laws of my art, you ain't getting out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Your heart is heavy with that shit. <laughs> I said, you got to see this bitch. This nigga just electrocuted himself. I'm like, where, where were you going with this? Like, like that's your high blood pressure? <laughs> you did that for high blood pressure? Oh, nigga, you, know, you need to get on the phone. Nigga. You need to get on the phone. You shouldn't have did that shit at all, you know. Who's your doctor, Hi, man? <laughs> Who's your doctor? Kevorkian? <laughs> Yo, just electrocute yourself. This shit will go down. <laughs> this nigga just sat in the chair and just said, <laughs> just fell out. I said, I said, you know, you thought it was just a regular thing. So I said, no, that's DJ Full Moon. I said, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, he, he wants some shit, man. By the laws of my yacht, though, <laughs> he ain't making it on that one. <laughs> By the laws of my yacht, I guess he's going to next call I guess. By the laws of my yacht. <laughs> yeah, cool. I guess we go to the next caller, I guess. I guess. You're going I to guess we call a 25425. You on the line? Yeah, hello. <clears throat> Peace. Yeah, peace. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just wanted to say, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to be reminded, man, of uh, I guess you call it the past, you know, because uh, I know mm-hmm. for one thing, I probably got sidetracked for a little bit, you know, not necessarily worrying about white folks because you already know the deal, but 
but just mm-hmm. realizing that, you know, it, this is just a dream. You know, we already know the real deal. You know, we right. created everything, and they basically stealing everything from us. I, um, right. One of the questions I had was about this new movie. Um, they come out with The Hobbit, right? Where mm-hmm. in the new one, they go on to slay this dragon, and they say when you slay the dragon, you get your homeland back. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I couldn't help but see that dragon and just have an idea of the Kundalini energy. That's just it was just you know that just came up in my head. You know, I just wanted to know what mm-hmm. you thought about that. Yeah, well, the dragon is either Kundalini, but more to the Great Mother. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, so I mean, you know, without seeing the movie, I mean, the 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 obstacle in mythology, the dragon is always just basically that obstacle. Um, that you that you it is the mastery of the Kundalini. When you um, um, when you see the dragon in the cave, it represents the sleeping or the sleeping dragon represents the don't wake the sleeping dragon, or the dragon with the pearl in his mouth representing the pineal. So it does represent the Kundalini, but it represents it in the feminine force. The waking fire fire breathing dragon is the uh, uh, awakened Kundalini. This dragon is protecting gold. Which is nothing more than alchemy or the pineal or, or 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 at the end of the rainbow or the end of the chakras you get the gold. So it, it's always going to be a kundalini story, um, but uh, mm-hmm. it depends on how the things they say. It may be also a, a part of uh, dealing with the divine feminine, slaying the divine feminine. Remember the first was the first was to shut down the evil eye, which was to shut down the pineal gland. That was the okay. first three, the all C and I. So yep. I'm sure you are the sure Rings trilogy, yeah. Right, the, the the first trilogy. I'm sure you're right. You know what I'm saying? It was like these elves uh, or these dwarves mined the land that just represents, uh, I guess you could say, melanin too. And you know, this dragon took over, and there was there was certain, a jewel even there, a special jewel there that in the first one, the Hobbit one. Um, mm-hmm. it, there was a jewel there that that the, that this dragon took. If I remember, because these these fucking things are long sucking arduous <laughs> watching these bullshit ass movies. You know what I'm saying? I tried, okay. but you know what I'm saying, will you not? Yeah, it gets me like that too. I fall asleep yeah. too. Like man, this thing is major long. Yeah. yeah, will you not serve me, Hobbit? Is your word not good <laughs> as a Hobbit? Like fuck a Hobbit. We <laughs> shall <laughs> <laughs> make it to the Shire, Hobbit. There we shall Go have down. feast. We shall feast, <laughs> Hobbit. Like, uh, nah. But that's I'm my thing, though. That. So why don't we get, why Why is it that, you know, I remember back in the day, we used to have some movies that was like straight all black movies. You know what I'm saying? It was an all mm-hmm. black cast, you know. But now it's like you really don't see it anymore. And it's like when you have this conversation with people, they say, oh, well, black people need to get their own production. It's like we do have our own production, but it just seems like we're not pushing out movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, 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 happened to, was, exactly. what happened was, um, what happened was, who, a good documentary on that is one by Melvin Van Peebles, Mario Van Peebles' father, where he broke okay. down uh, the lineage of how these movies develop. Now, basically, where it came in was um, black people were forced to come up with their shafts and their. Well, actually, well, he the first breakthrough one was Sweetback, and it was political and it was embraced by conscious folk. It was embraced by uh, uh, the Black Panther Party, and so what they did was like they always do, and this this is one of the major sciences they did it with rap. They have to they they take the idea and water it down. Same way they took um, rap music and just made it gangster music. They just turned it into a, a goddamn show. So they took Sweetback and he became Shaft. So now mm. instead of fighting for um, fighting for the man, he he was a cool kick ass when he smacked a few white people around. But he still was uh, he was a, a detective. Still was on the white people's side. Then eventually became Superfly. Which he was just a pimp. He was the same sweetback character, but now he's just a pimp in a in, in a coke sniffing dude. So he and they went through all the movies in between that 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 went this way. You know what I'm saying? Little subtle things. For instance, Pam Grier's whole career, she would uh, she would you know kick a white mob, kick the white police officer, or or shut down the white mob. 
in 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 what's the Jackie Brown? She, yeah, Jackie she Brown. Worked yeah. For, she worked for the police and she shut down a black man. You know what I'm saying. So uh-huh. they they turned the whole energy around. Um, now even before then, so what they they said the next step was they started to notice that black cinema was making a lot of money, action movies, and it kind of pe- uh, peaked out. Everybody was Mr. Badass, King T, and and Trouble Man, and all of this shit. They said kind of plateaued out. Then what white people started to notice was if you put one black person in the white movie, it's still you still get the black audience. So they start putting Jim Brown. And so that, but that's my point, right? With the the Hobbit thing, it's like, yo, you only see you don't see not one black person. But you know, I think that's I'm, the I'm happy. Definitely I don't want to see no for the other side. I, I definitely want to see no Hobbit niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I am comfortable with that shit. But, uh, <laughs> you know, a nigga, yeah, a Hobbit nigga funny. gonna fuck up. A Hobbit nigga gonna fuck everything up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Only nigga in there eating wings and shit. <laughs> oh man, eating wings and yeah, hot sauce. One quick, know what I'm one more quick point because I know I won't take up too much time. Um, I noticed you talked about how the Wachowski brothers that got sued. Is that in reference to mm-hmm. Sophia Stewart? Yeah, I mean, I always hear so many stories. Um, no but doubt. I do know for sure. This is what I do know for sure. The first person to do a story in the Ghetto Times was actually my boy, Tef. Tef what? actually is the first one to do her story, then the Ghetto Times kind of picked up on it. He was the first one to call her Mother of the Matrix and all of these and all of these things. Now, what he told me was when everyone was celebrating her victory, what she actually won was the right to take them to court at one point. Because, right on. you know, you're going to have a 1,000 people saying, that's my script. So they have to yeah. sift through sift through certain things to make sure that um, that that you even have a claim. Now, the book she wrote was basically about machines uh, taking over. So it also yeah, the, brought the, in the third eye. Terminator. Yeah. It, it also brought in the Terminator as well because that's what the Terminator story is. So so what I heard was she had the ability to sue. That was the that was the big thing. And then I heard later on that she actually sued and with the. Who knows? You know that's that's no, that's no. Because look, I actually went a little deep with it. You know, I, she sent mm-hmm. me the little court documents that she sued the lawyers because she felt they was in on it, and they granted her motion. This is like 2013 stuff, so she's still fighting. You know what I mean? So that's mm-hmm. that's all okay. good and dandy, but you know, so so that's yeah, that's a cool word to spread. I mean, yeah, it, it is what it is, but. But um, yeah. I, I would say. But I just wanted to know why you. I just wanted to know if that's what you were talking about because of the Wachowski brother. Yeah, you know, yeah, having that I mean, sex change possibly, like that's hilarious. Possibly, possibly, but this nigga got a this nigga got a full blown sex change, so that might have been for real. It's not even mm. cute. He's like a like a like a, like a, like a <laughs> he wears a dress now. You know what I'm saying. I think with the red head though. Yeah, with the red head and yeah, and they got him up there on a the news conference like. Like he's the man, like or him the man, like you know. Like yeah, he's a man. no but doubt. Like but yeah, thanks that. for that. Uh, thanks for that, brother. I don't want to take up too much time. You know, I just yeah, had those brief know. questions. But yeah, man, thanks for reminding the brother to stay on top of his game and not worry about what they doing. Real talk. Well, like I said, like I said, I mean, it's all you know. I I, I love to complain like the next man, but but that's as far as it goes. We decode it, but um, <clears throat> we're not gonna buy into that. You know what I'm saying? As something that's mm-hmm. serious, you know what I'm saying? As something yes, that's sir. serious. So, so I mean, you know, and you know, and it's easy to it's it's a disgusting thing, so it's easy to fall into. Uh, look at this white motherfucker. You ever see a dirty white kid at the at, at the goddamn Walmart? You know I'm saying you want to drown his ass. <laughs> you want to drown his ass. So I know how easy hey, well, I just thought about this. Have you seen that movie Upside Down? Yeah. What did you think about that as far as the dimensional shift? And is that pretty accurate, or did you think it was like, nah? Nah, I thought they just had an idea. You know what I'm saying? I was I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think they head jacked head. it all up. They <laughs> jacked it up because they made it seem like, you know, the poor people, they stay on the bottom and the rich people up there. And I'm like, no, nah, y'all messed up the concept right there, you know? Yeah, I seen it. it, was just, it was, I wasn't feeling it though. But uh, but 
Yeah, I just kept turning. I was like, all right, is he upside down or is he right side up? And why is gravity doing Trying to look for continuity. <laughs> like, who the fuck knows? Yeah, yeah I, I actually so. have it on DVD. Yeah, but I mean. All right, but cool. I'm going to check out that watch. documentary from Melvin Van Peebles, too. I'm going to look that up. Oh, yeah, yeah. You you can find that online. Like I said, he went through it, and um, what he like I said, what he found out was, yeah, that's what we were talking about. He found out if you put one black dude in a white movie, that it still sells. And that was the rise of, basically the rise of Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy with all them Beverly Hills cops and all of that. The toy. And in the to, uh, well, the toy, and you know, definitely, you know, Stir Crazy and all of that Richard Pryor, definitely. But Eddie Murphy was the pivoting point. And where it changed was when Spike Lee, Robert Townsend, and the, that was the reemerging of it. So they had all black cast and Hollywood Shuffle, do the right thing. So you started having ensemble niggas again. To so much so that Eddie Murphy did uh, Boomerang with the ensemble cast. And that was a big deal because Eddie Murphy was a, you know, single star. So so it, it, it's there, but, you know, it's Hollywood. That's their shit. So I can't you know complain about Scandal anymore. Oh, <laughs> uh, you could, you could, no, you could, you know what I'm saying? I would. I complain about that. I'm shit. just saying, I'm like, you know, they got they put the sister. She looked like a straight slave, like, you know what I'm saying, with the slave master. That's just, you know, the appearance I see, you know. I'm sure but that's it what is. it is. That's because that's what yeah. they're doing. That's what it is. And yeah, you should mention, like, don't, don't get me wrong. Under, there's two ways to look at it. You, I'm not saying that we shouldn't unveil the bullshit. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me be clear yes, on sir. that. You see some white people okay. doing some dumb shit, report. You know what I'm saying? I think the yeah, emotional. Yeah, just don't get emotional. The emotional question. Yeah. The emotional uh, 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 connection to it may need to be questioned. But if you see them mm-hmm. doing some bullshit with Mandela, say it. You know what I'm saying? They need to, no they, they need to be out because we're dealing with knowledge here. We're dealing with information here. We're dealing with, yes, we, we're dealing with bringing, bringing forth light. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like we ignoring shit. You know what I'm saying? I seen that little slavery ass shit. I complain about <laughs> it every time that shit is on. I complain when Khadija is watching that shit. You know what I'm saying? Fuck you. Yeah, because I mean, I just called it out because I'll, I've watched two episodes in two seasons. I'll never watch that joint. But the episode I caught, you know, he, she was supposedly she hated the dude, and then she um she was like, okay, I'll see you again. And he goes to this house that she that he supposedly built for, her, and she let him mm. smash, but they smashed on the floor. And so I was like, look at that! He didn't even have enough, right. like you, he didn't care about enough to smash he on the bed, the like, sheet. like he didn't, he yeah, didn't with want the to sheets, the like that. you know what I'm saying? I was, and people yeah, said, "Do you see like, that?" Nah, nah, I can't. I, I'm not, I, I only, the only <laughs> thing I seen that shit when I was fucking sleeping. You know what I'm saying? I was no like, no. "Why is this on?" Yeah, but I just called it out though. You know, I see some, I see some white folks doing some crazy stuff, but I called it out. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, they out here got the chick looking like a straight slave. Like, wow. And and black women is flocking to it. You know what I'm saying? So I just call it out, and you know, it goes as it goes. You know, I ain't tripping on it. Yeah, I I can't. No, that's that's, I observe that. Busting that shit out like a motherfucker. You watching that shit? Word up, word up. All right, y'all gentlemen, well, have a good night, night, man. Thanks think a lot. I can't go on without right. another perspective. It's hard to jump <laughs> oh, in the middle of a story and then be able to see the whole detail. But the reason why they smashed on the flow is because they was in a new house. Everything was covered up, if you notice. It was probably spiders <laughs> and dust in the bed. But that's uh, the president, though. That's the president. <laughs> he, he, how are you the president and you got webs on your stuff? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> That, no. Well, the reason it, 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 oh, the reason was is because she had no longer wanted to be with him, and the house was right. shut in. And I've been in a shut in house. It's seriously spiders and dust. So you can't be rummaging. But that's the president, house. though. <laughs> <laughs> that's the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How the president gonna bring? How you you want to get this chick back, and you gonna bring her to a house with spiders, though? He bought it for her. But also, to one of the addresses, you said she is a slave. But 
I wanted to also make this statement. Look at this picture. Mm-hmm. She's a slave with utmost respect. That woman got oh, everybody so she, on Oh, okay, so she that, she that classy slave. <laughs> I ain't even walking that, dude. I tried yeah. this shit already arguing with but I tried this shit. You need to let that one scandal go, dude. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's, it's a scandal. Like, Khadija watched yeah. that shit, too. She'll tell you all that. But in real life, y'all, like, in real life, she with a brother. So that's what I love about mm-hmm. the whole scenario. But that's my whole thing. And Namdi crazy, because I wouldn't even sell for that. Like, no, nah, you up here on TV creating this image. You know what I'm saying? Where you with this white dude, you know what I'm saying? And he married. Like, I ain't having it. Mm-mm. You better what quit. Francis Quest, Fran- huh. Francis Quest Wilson was talking about her. Yeah, well, she sure what did. You? Well, that's slave. And, but see, Khadija watches that. Like, she ain't no slave. Like, oh, you right. <laughs> see, that's the shit you got you to gotta, you gotta, You said, nah, she still got a little dignity with this and that. So it must be a little bit more complex than just out and out. You know what I'm saying? And but, I, I mean, I that's the whole it. basis of the story. That's the whole basis of the story is that you got this black woman with the white president, and he's married. And the thing is, the woman that he's married to, she's cool with it. You know what I'm saying? To a, to a mm-hmm. certain point, she's cool with right. it. And then I even yeah. joke because uh, the Kerry Washington's mom comes into the picture. I said she was the runaway slave that came back to the plantation. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they just painted that whole picture. It was like, wow, man, they're not playing with this whole slavery thing. Twelve years of slave. Hey, yo, twelve years of slave. He's a free man, and he's kidnapped into slavery. How about that? Yeah, he only watched did. two episodes. Her mom is not no runaway slave. She was She was either. She tired, was like a terrorist or something. But I, yes. and her husband shut it down and locked her up. So she wasn't no runaway slave, God. No, but I'm saying no, to wasn't. the goddess, to the goddess, I'm just saying all I needed from the universe was to see two episodes to get enough that I could really draw a conclusion because everything else was being given to me by the women. Like, yeah, this is what the story's about, you know, seeing little snippets here and there, and I was good. I watched two whole episodes, and that was all I needed. That was all I needed. <laughs> Like I was like I'm nah. done. Like I was I was expecting for it to be like 24. Like yo, I want to watch this show because it's some action. Once I seen the slave, the slave imagery, oh, I was done. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up and down, I was done. I was like, yo, she's a slave. We got all these slave movies coming out, and the woman love it. I was like, come on, y'all, y'all got to see what I'm seeing. Nah, they ain't having it, bro. They love it. <laughs> I was wondering what are they. People for multiple mates, you know, because like you stated, the wife, she's, you know, she's good with it because she realized that her husband loves this woman. So that's what I was. Wondering. Nah, she good I'm with it because it's position she in. That's the president. Like you, she, like she said, if you go on TV and you tell everybody about y'all being together, I will air out all your dirty laundry. You know what I'm saying? She made a deal with him, and then once he said he wasn't going to do that, she was good, and he left her. Said bed <laughs> Yeah, that's what's going down. I promise you, that's all it is, man. And and Terry Washington played the slave. She played the slave mistress in uh in Django. She played the same position in Django and go straight into a scandal. Okay. Now, I don't know about that. That, that that's a that's a bit of a stretch. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's just what I thought. That's just, I, I know you. I know you got it, Patty. But that's just what I thought. No, no, no. She's the object of the whole movie of this nigga rescuing her. Oh, um, uh, yeah, they, yeah. They forcing her into that, which is which was a reality. It wasn't like she was bad. No, no. It wasn't like in no, Roots no. Or belly warmer. No, they used to call them belly warmers in Roots. Like, you need a yeah, belly warmer it. for the night? <laughs> I don't think she needs a belly warmer. <laughs> I don't know. Like, look, look, I wouldn't get too carried away with it. Like, I, I no, ain't going to no, lie to no, no. The sisters watch that shit, so I'm going to listen to what she say. They know. They, she knows slavery. <laughs> so if she ain't said, if she said this woman is a slave, I believe that shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't going to lie. Doubt, if doubt. I watch it, I mean, because you can watch anything and make him a slave. You know what I'm saying? Spe- <laughs> yeah. no, let's be real. I could, watch, I could pick, carve out like two episodes of damn near anything and be like, oh, okay, that's fucked up. If, especially if you're looking for it. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and, and you know, not to say that it's not 
Because I might look at it and be like, oh, what is this bitch is a slave. <laughs> but I don't watch. But my first thing is like, this is the watches, the shit. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, nah, it's a little bit more complex. And I'll do you one minute. She's saying the same thing Khadija said to me. Um, like mm-hmm. it's a little bit more complex. Like she said, you can take it that way if you go down, if you walk down that road. But but no uh, you know, especially if any relation, any any time a white man in any context fucks a, a black woman, you're gonna go down that road. Your mind's good, especially oh for yeah, us. it's all bad. It's, it's gonna all go bad. down that road. <laughs> it's, it's gonna go yeah. down that road. But the reality is, is just a common girl, or they, they're trying to make it a common girl with with the president. And the mm-hmm. scandal that comes that that comes across with it, you know, you know that's what they're going for. We going to see the same yeah. thing because fucking insane motherfuckers. But, but check this out, brother. She, uh, the lady uh, who I was on the phone, she can also tell you that the black senator tries to get with her, and she denies him. Mm. That's mm. what really got me was when she did when the the black senator proposed, and she's like, "Nah, homie, I'm good." You know what I'm saying? Because wow. her father loved him, remember? And then also, too, she was scared that her father was going to kill him. As a matter of fact, when her father found out that they were dating, he he got into a horrible car accident. Now, remember, mm. his father killed people. So she left him to keep him safe and was single for a long she time me. after that. See, they watch that, dog. Like, you say, you, 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 you. No, but and I'm just saying, that, that don't do nothing that, but make that, the that father Uncle Ruckus. The but, father's but, nobody but Uncle Ruckus now. <laughs> but, but, that's not really a but, that, but that's not really a slavery thing, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> black women, <laughs> black black women wanted to get with black men, so it wasn't yeah. like that wasn't a slavery thing. That's just no that's doubt. the 1960s civil rights movement shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it doesn't matter. They, I mean, it don't matter. I mean, you can go on and on for days. I, but uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. twelve years of slave, I'm glad you brought that up too as well. The um, you know that's based upon a true story, and it's based yes, upon yeah. mm-hmm. a book. Avery Brooks did a movie in the '80s on it. Now that shit to me, <laughs> now that's some slavery shit. No, <laughs> no, some real slavery shit is that goddamn Butler. Now that's some shit. Oh to complain my god, about. that's some shit to complain about. I cannot. <laughs> yeah, I, I will never. That will never. That poor that that black trash will never be played in my house. That black trash will never be played in my house. I swear to God, I will front choke the shit out of Forrest Whitaker for that bullshit. <laughs> and and then you got people like, oh my God, it it, it was real history. You got to teach your children to watch oh, that. And, niggas think the color then, purple is real history. You know what I'm saying for real, you can't even go and, by that. Niggas niggas is like. The color purple is <laughs> some true shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Niggas think what I didn't like was how they made the black. Yeah, they made the Black Panthers look bad in that movie. Like you know, she was never, they were I, I don't the table. Even, I, I I can't even I can't even pontificate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even, that's I what they did, brother. I'm that. telling you, I, I went I'm down sure that road, did. like you said. I'm sure they did. I went down that I'm road. Sure they, I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. Mm-hmm. First of all. If they made the Black Panthers look great, I don't give a fuck they made Forrest Whitaker because the butler, the happy butler. <laughs> I, don't happy I, don't give, I don't give a fuck if they show them murdering. <laughs> the whole bunch of Carter murders, a whole bunch of white women. Uh-uh, you know what I'm saying? This nigga's haircut. Uh, terrible shit. Some terrible, <laughs> shit. Some terrible, terrible shit. No, nah, I mean, you, yes, can expect, you can expect it, but like I said, I trust the woman. They'll watch that shit because... I, the women that you're talking to right now, mm-hmm. if you see some slavery shit, you would know it. If she sees yes, some shit, you would know oh, it. No, I trust her. I, I, I trust, trust her. Word. I yeah, trust yeah, her. I word. do too. Like, uh, you know, it's just, you know, uh, I just like the. Uh, she, 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 I've seen her reach in and, and, and point out fucked up shit that I'm like, oh, well, wow, I didn't even notice that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I know no. she she could see. You know what I'm saying? She ain't just picking and choosing. And like I said, yeah. DJ ain't no joke neither. She won't watch shit. And you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Unless it's harmless. I try to get her to watch Love and Hip Hop. <laughs> I'm the fucked up one. Okay? Yeah, like, for real. She ain't watching none of that shit. Man. I'm like, yo, yo, this nigga, yo, they got this nigga fucking Peter Gunn, son. You got to watch this shit. I ain't watching that <laughs> fucking nonsense, motherfucker. We're still watching. Yeah, I'm like, I just come home, I'll be watching that shit. Are you watching that bullshit? I'm like, yo, this shit is crazy. You know what I'm saying? This bitch got a tattoo. Miss, 
Peter Gunn tattooed Miss Pancakes on her back. This shit is funny as hell. When I say niggas are supremely ignorant, y'all ain't got, y'all talking about white people? Y'all need to watch these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas, watch Love and Hip Hop. You know what I'm saying? Them bitches is that scandal. You know what I'm saying? You want to see some slave holes? Watch that shit. You know what I'm saying? Them bitches is crazy. You know what I'm saying? And these won't even watch that shit, but she'll watch Scandal like on 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 uh, on on demand and shit. Like, mm-hmm. oh, really? And they they'll de- they'll defend Scandal too. It, it don't if you break it up, they will come out the woodwork. See if you ain't spoke to it. I don't think she's that. Uh, I don't think she's no, that no, serious no, no. about it. But, no, no, but, but it's she, just funny. But, to me. She, but she's like, <laughs> I think she gives it more credit. She and this is what I do notice, and she wouldn't do this unless it was true. And it, and 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 I know Aleem's queen. Pretty much, I pretty much, I think I could say the same thing. But I definitely yes, say for Khadijah, she wouldn't, um, she wouldn't, she wouldn't embellish that shit. She, she, because Khadijah would be like, that bitch is a slave, but I love the show. So it ain't like she mm-hmm. got nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not like she yes, needs it to be pristine for her to watch it. She'd be like, oh, that bitch is a goddamn fucking. <laughs> <laughs> She's sophisticated in the, in the show. She, I think that's what they probably like. Like, you know, she's sophisticated. She's in charge of getting people elected. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just that she when those parts come up, you, you, you know. I tell you, because she don't give a fuck about that. That, that glamour, ain't, that, yeah. that glamour life ain't fucking with her. I, if, if I was to, to speculate why she would like the show, is just she, it's the writing. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's mm-hmm. you know, it, the, the the way they write it. In the way it's, it's the story, you know what I'm saying? Khadija is a story person, and and, I, I and I, the me. little bit that I catch, I could see there always. It's, it's it's all my children. The mother's here. The father's here. The father's gonna do that. The mother's gonna do that. They they speak yeah. with quick dialogue and all this kind of shit. This guy's that. This guy. You just never know what's gonna happen next. And, yeah, because they go ham. When when it's yeah, like the next episode, not, they be like, oh my god, oh my. God. I'm like. Mm-hmm. What are y'all so hype about? But I guess I have it. You know, it's a story. It's a story that caught the attention. You know, it's written by a sister as well. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I mean, it ain't that far gone. You know what I'm saying? It's just no like doubt. if you, whenever you see a black woman fucking a white man, because because basically Wesley Snipes fucked a whole lot of holes on the floor. And nobody ain't say shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Wesley blended them hoes. She was Wesley did. And nobody say shit about that. Wesley fucked a whole bunch of hoes on the balcony, on the floor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nobody ain't say shit. Why you make a little pussy on the floor? Niggas are losing their mind. Oh, that bitch is insane. She fucked them on the floor. <laughs> you the, you know, the white people fuck on the floor like every day. Did you see Fatal Attraction? <laughs> bitch had dirty dishes and everything. <laughs> Nigga fuck on the dirty dishes and everything. Oh man. Okay. Right ass, ass, man. Yeah, yeah, but that's cool. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for clearing that up, uh, y'all. Appreciate that. And uh, yeah, Cloud yeah. Atlas did suck too. I agree with that definitely. Huh? Say again. Cloud Atlas sucked. Cloud Atlas. Oh yeah, sucked. yeah, yeah. It sucked. It sucked. Yep. It, sucked. it sucked big balls. Somebody keep calling. I gave it a chance to too. Me. Yeah, no, no. I, I I watched it a couple of times. You know what I'm saying, but yep, it just didn't do it. I, it was like, what the fuck was that whole shit with that Chinese lady? Like, what the fuck? What the fuck was that? You know what I'm saying? No doubt. Like, what the fuck was that? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> nah, yeah, I didn't. Like, where'd she come like, from? <laughs> yeah, like, like, why is she like? Uh, it just didn't. Like and that's a good waste of Holly Berry. <laughs> she ain't showing her titties, and it don't matter <laughs> anymore. You already no sure you broke the mold. Hey, brother! Quick Hi, question. Bro. I swear I'm getting out of here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to you okay. offline. Uh, what's, what's up right? with the 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 negative image the black movies getting the Oscars? You know what I'm saying? But we can't get any like positive image black movies getting that's Oscars. Fish. You know? I mean, do you really want an Oscar? Not necessarily. You make a great point right there. Is is that what we is that what we're going for the Oscars? No, we're I mean, definitely not well, going I, for. I, but I understand no. what you're saying. Like, why why are they celebrating our bullshit? Because that's their role. They have to. They're, they're trying to promote us 
doing monkey mm-hmm. shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. They gonna, they gonna, and, we, and like you said, we put them reward there. You for playing, yeah, you gonna, they're going to reward you for playing Malcolm X? No. <laughs> Not bloody likely. You know what I'm saying? Not bloody Not likely. You know what I'm saying? You beat a whole number three, you know, beat a whole number four, you know, guy, you know, that that's Oscar worthy, you know what I'm saying? It's hard out mm-hmm. there for a pimp and all that kind of shit. Yeah, right, right. So so in in and with that ending, um, you know, we put them in that position. So, you know, we put did we put them there so that we can learn to get beyond perfection. You know, I over the years I've learned so I've heard so many different stories, you know, Bobby Hemmings, Dr. White Umar. People as as a general in general. Yeah, like we put like, them in like that why position. they weren't in this Yeah, I mean yeah. I mean, it's, it's a part of what we're doing. But first and foremost, why I come to Earth? Let's let's let you need to start there. Why would you need yes, to sir. come to Earth? Why would we need this earthly this 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 to happen? It's clear that it could only be one logical reason. That is to have the experience, mm-hmm. and the experience because we are clear that this is an illusion can only amount to uh, uh, learning, as opposed to uh, something that's actually happened. If this is a dream, a merrily, merrily dream, that means we could only, it, it only could affect us like a dream would. Like when you have a dream and, and, and you, you come into a revelation when you wake up, like, wow, okay, I need to talk about this. In fact, um, talking about faith after I woke up came from a dream. You get what I'm saying? So I'm able to say, okay, that's what we need to, to speak about. Um, now you can say, of course, they just say it's spiritual, but ultimately it's it's from a different place in your mind that you're bringing forth this information. So on a on a, another scale, that's what's happening on planet Earth. If we had a sweet, okay. comfy, cushiony life down here, that means we are not in a position to learn anything. You learn through the pressure. You learn through right. the hardship. It's what the hardship or the suffering is what builds the character. So we're here and under this illusion, we're trying to get the most out of it. So we have to put ourselves in the position furthest away from our true reality. Because if we're living our true reality down here, there's no reason to come down here. You get what I'm saying? Why yes, come down here and live the reality that we already obtained and already mastered? then it's a waste of time. You don't learn nothing. So we right have on. to put ourselves under the illusion of ignorance, number one. <laughs> and yeah. that's, that's just humanity itself. So that puts us in the, if you're the know-it-all, the be-all, the end-all, the beginning, the end, the alpha and omega, God, goddess, what can you learn in this universe if you created it? So you, the That'd only thing boring. you can do as a scientist is, is, is actually pretend or put yourself in a place where you divorce yourself from your knowing. That's the illusion of ignorance, which is you basically you wash over your true intelligence with a with a human body. So now that you're in this position, um, the true path to 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 alchemy, as I'll tell you, is not the destination; it's the path that matters. The true path, right. or, or going through life or lifetimes, is actually the work that we're doing. To actually cope, to actually really learn something, to actually go to another level, and I always give the example in the movie Coming to America. You're already the prince. You already have somebody washing your dick, brushing your teeth, mm-hmm. wiping your ass. The royal penis is already clean. So why is he going to America and working at McDonald's, get, going to the church, haircut, and all of this shit? Because he has to. He's trying to find something new. He's already got the bitch, whatever you like, but he has to find something new. So ultimately, we've already mastered this. To find something new, we have to, we, we, we're putting ourselves in this position. So the white person is nothing more than a, a, the worst-case scenario black person. That's it. He, is, he represents <laughs> a grafted version of our lower animal self or humanity's lower animal self, I should say or what humanity can be as a lower animal. He is that manifested, therefore allowed to run wild, allowed to take, take this over, so we're in a position of struggle. 
And that struggle is where we're actually the ones that's learning. We're the lucky ones because uh, when it's all said and done, we're the ones with the experience, and they're the ones in the fucking delusion. They go, they just go back into non-existence. Simple as that. So, so that's one way to look at it. You get what I'm saying? Yep, I got you. That's really clear. That's one way. Thank and you, sir. I haven't, I haven't seen anything contrary to. To that, I mean, I'm sure there are things that people would say. Well, no, it's this, it's that, it's the other thing. But um, yeah, that's but for you to decipher yourself, uh, right? Yeah, for you to decipher, for you to come because you're talking about your perspective. But I would say in my study, that's the, that's the kind of thing that I keep seeing coming. Kind of adds up the best for me. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, sir. It makes total sense. All right, thank you, sir. Y'all right, have a great time. night, gentlemen and ladies. All right. All right, bro. Peace. All right. All right, peace. All right, let's go to area code 215. Area code 215, you live on the air. Hello, how are you? Hey. How are you doing? Okay. This is Dolores calling from Philadelphia. What's up, D? Hey, I was calling, I guess, with another infomercial about Brother Payne's class. I took, maybe it was this second session, and I find myself just going back into the tape that he, he records the whole class, and right, I find myself record. going back over and over, just learning about chakras and, and the kundalini, the altars, the candle magic, you know, all of that, even to the Kabbalion, and learning all about that, and it's just a real beneficial class that you can use years from now. So say if you didn't get it within that setting, you can always go back a month from now, a year from now, and just learn more and more. So I just wanted to give a shout out to the other I'm, I'm so class. glad. And, I'm um, so glad. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm so really glad happy that yeah, I took the class. <laughs> and, yeah, um, I'm, I'm, oh, go ahead. <laughs> No, I'm just I, yeah, I'm just happy to hear it's certain that you're satisfied and you are actually right on point because that's how I designed it. Whereas for years to come, you can still benefit. Yeah, as you as your consciousness uh, morphs, um, the information morphs, which I uh, make sure people get copies of the class. I record every class and I make sure you have copies. So if you missed it the first time. You're able to, um, you know, you're able to go get the copies of the class. So that's good. I'm glad to help. I do remember you, Dolores. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, peace, brothers. That's great. Peace. 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 Right. I'm glad. I'm glad it's working for you. I'm glad it's working for you. Mm-hmm. And that's why I like Dolores is so content. She doesn't even have a question. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Panic Classes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Panic Classes. Thank you. <laughs> Remember, you can email, we're about to start a new cycle. Email me, panicpack at hotmail.com, P-A-N-I-C-P-I-C-K, P-A-C-K. So that's P-A-N-I-C-P-A-C-K at Hotmail, and I'll give you all the information you need for the classes. The people who have paid for classes, I'm about to give you guys calls. If you haven't left your phone number, email me your phone number, and I'm about to call you so we can set up a schedule for um, the next cycle, but get at me now. People who are trying to rush to get into class, let's go. And like I said, I'm constantly doing this, so if you can't make it this cycle, there's always next cycle, but this is something that you definitely want to do. I mean, like I said, you get, there's time after time and people after people who are benefit from it. It's not just me saying it. The people who have taken the class will be happy to tell you themselves. Panic pack at hotmail.com. Just get at me, and I guess we're going to the next caller. All or right, no DJ doubt, because we people to come on the air who have taken Brother Panic's classes, and they all say the same thing. So definitely check those out. As well as also, we have our classes coming up on Qigong, Tai Chi, Reiki, Pranic Killing, and et cetera, coming up on January the 12th. Um, and for those who are interested, um, get with us. Go to the website. Um, it will be scheduled on the calendar, as well as also um, give us a call at 910-364-9099.
and um, check us out also. Um, so, um, Brother Penny, there's no one, um, no more Excellent. calls right now. So if you want to build, um, you definitely can feel free. We can get back into some topics. Okay. Yeah, right. And also, if um, anyone have a please press one or either call in at nine one zero. Excuse me, at um six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. That's six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. Right, if you're in the chat room, if you got a question, if you're in the chat room, go ahead. Um, if you still, because I know we're losing callers after getting into the after hours. If you have a question in the chat room, go ahead. We'll do that too. Oh, you're right. right. Yeah, that's right. We'll get area okay. code five zero one, brother Penny. That's on the line. Getting ready to open them up. Zero five zero one. Peace. 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 How y'all doing? Fine, fine. Good. Good. I also took brother brother Penny's class, and yeah, it's it's great. You know, um, Who, who's sometimes this? you just see the process. Uh, Elnora. Oh, okay. What's up? Okay. What's up? How you doing? Peace, brother. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. What up? Yeah, and um, and it's great. You know, um, sometimes you just need the process. Um, he breaks everything down so smoothly that anyone with a little knowledge can get it. You know, right. you talk over your head so much that you don't know what's going on or what you're supposed to do. Makes it very practical. Oh, so that's my um, feedback on that. I do have a question, though. Um, mm-hmm. Thank. First of all, I want to say thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad it's working for you, and that's. Another thing I try to do is is built for those who are advanced and those who are just starting out. So you don't have to be at a certain level. You can just come as you are, and it shall help. And you'll be able to get something out of it for each of us. I, I speak to people on their level. So I want to thank you, and I'm glad you took the class, too. And I'm glad to see you working for me, sis. Oh, yes. I still have to email you for the other uh, classes. I've studied class one and class three, but two and four, I haven't, you know, went back through those. Right. But, so Just my email, me, is, email, email me, and you know I have to send it through Skype. So you, once you email me, we have to set Skype time. Okay. Okay. Cool. I will. My question is, have y'all found in y'all work that in trying, and class has a lot to do with this, but in trying to recreate um, fluke experiences of um, like let's say you were uh, walking down the street and then had an out of body experience or you're having sex and then end up in a place with no light space or time or something you know and trying to recreate situations where um, those things happen I guess that's what I've been trying to do. And, you know, I thought mm-hmm. that the, the things that were common in both of those were rhythm, breath, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, still mind. You know, and try, did you, have y'all mm-hmm. found that it's better to try to recreate those or to just keep uh, experimenting question. until? <laughs> Excellent question. Me personally, I'll try to, I'll, if, if it was such a profound experience, I'll try to mm-hmm. recreate it. If it doesn't happen, I do not trip off of it, or or I'll just I'll just keep going because it was that experience for that time. But there are certain things that I can keep tapping into. There's certain things that I tap into for a period of time. And there's certain things like that shit only happen once. So I just um, learned to accept. You know, I don't don't make it a rule, but I've personally learned to accept whatever comes down the pipe as as that's the experience I'm supposed to have for that moment, for that time, and enjoy it right. there, you know what I mean? Enjoy that now, you know what I mean, okay. personally. Like, uh, you know, I don't really, uh, yeah, like uh, recreating, uh, do I, I'm trying to think, is there anything I try to recreate? The closest I'll come to it is, Let's say a little minor things. Usually, there aren't things that that are just so 
mind blowing or mind numbing for little feelings or little zones or moods. So I try to create a genetic memory of that mood and try and remember these moods are just a state of mind anyway. So certain moods you can recapture in a state of mind. So through meditation, through meditation, I'll try to capture, I'll try to remember the mood. And and the mood is usually connected to a thought or a sound. Like, you know, uh, let's say... Uh, for instance, here's a thought. There's a certain, when I used to get on the train in Brooklyn, um, it was a, 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 a train that was above ground. So it used to, the way it used to hit the sun created a certain mood, and that mood used to always inspire a feeling. So that, if, in that, that feeling of comfort that I noticed or, zoned or, or locked myself into or just became aware of, by by thinking or meditating on that scene, I can recreate that feeling in um, while I'm sitting in my house in Atlanta. You get what I'm saying? So I would think of that time. Now, there's also times that I think of music is probably the most uh, uh, powerful shit to get into a zone. So this old music, my shit is old disco shit. You know what I'm saying? I could get there and time travel back to that period. You know what I'm saying? And you got to remember, that time was an easier time. There was no fucking computers. I didn't have to pay rent. You know what I'm saying? Basically, they, 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 I had a whole bunch of titties to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? A whole bunch of potential. And so I can listen to that music and go there. One of the other things, I can I bought, like, HR Puffin stuff. Schoolhouse Rock, all them shits that you grew up with. I put that shit on and instantly transport to that time. Um, it, it'll tap right into that memory. And, and basically the memory is you used to watch that before you went outside and played all day. You know what I'm saying? So it just inspires that fucking mood. You know what I'm saying? As a, as, especially back in the days when I used to drink. I used to drink, put that Schoolhouse Rock on. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 15, and all this shit. And, and um, I'm just up, Bill. Sitting, you got to be old school to understand that. You know what I'm saying? It's sitting on Capitol Hill. You know what I'm saying? Three is the magic number. You be in that motherfucker high listening to that shit. You know what I'm saying? You go to do a high. Yes, it is. A, a, a yes, it is. It's the magic number. They was dropping signs on that shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They got the whole number scheme on that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, I might put that shit on tonight, god damn it. And, um, okay. Go right into a zone, right into a zone by, um, by, by the actual, so those tools help you uh, either reminisce or help you, um, Get into that zone to bring to 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 bring something up, but only if you become aware of what it is you're going for. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you got to figure out what it is for you. Maybe the maybe the Teletubbies. You know what I'm saying? The Magic School Bus. You may have had a thing for Mr. Hooper on Sesame Street. You got to just tap into whatever whatever it is. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, yeah Mr. Mr. Rogers was that freaky uncle. Hey, kids, you want to ride on my knee? First <laughs> And, uh, and, uh, like, uh, you know, I was watching that shit. There was a chick in my class. She came over by an pack. I said, yo, let's watch Mr. Rogers. <laughs> He's watching this shit on Hulu. You know what I'm saying? He's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, Panda? I'm like, this shit is just hot, yo. That music, he was right there, son. It's like I'm there. I'm in the I'm in the neighborhood, yo. The the story box, the story box, the story box. This is the magic story box. Like shit, you know what I'm saying? Go right there with it. 
So instead of trying to recreate the experience, it's more so, well, it's part of the experience. It's more so recreating the mood. Uh, yes, it, 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 that's the closest I've come to recreating the experience. Is uh, it would, would be I would have to say dealing with mood. Now, depending on the experience. Now, <laughs> see, if you're talking about like you had an orgasm that was fucking mind blowing, like it may be hard to recreate that because it was a one time event. But your childhood, for instance, like I said. The, the story box, Mr. Rogers, you spent Gilligan's Island, you you spent um, hours and hours of your life watching this in a certain zone or mood. Like, for instance, Gilligan Island would come on at a certain time. We would do the same certain thing for, for, for years. So when I watched Gilligan Island, I remember the rug. I remember the freezer that was in the, in, in the room. We used to watch it at my babysitter's house. I could, like, remember that. I remember she had a pull-out couch. Like, the details come back just from watching the Gilligan's Island or just even thinking about it. So the mere fact that the details come back, it creates that mood because this is something I did over and over. This wasn't a one-time event like an orgasm or, or, or something that happened in Walmart. This is something that, that was routinely going on in my life based upon – you have the music of Gilligan's Island, you know, um, the, the the theme song, the look, you know what I'm saying? And remember, during the show, they play music as well. So these things start to trigger and, and burn in your memory. So whereas if you, if, you, if you use that as a tool, it could get you back into these moods or these zones. But really, these moods and the zones you're going for, probably, you probably want the old school ones, because those were the ones that you had before you had the responsibility. You know what I'm saying? So everything I usually do, um, I usually do in terms of uh, the shit I had before I became responsible or stressed. So it's all my childhood shit, you know what I'm saying? You know, my altars, Robbie the Robot, and all the rest of that old shit. Because when I look at it, it brings me back to a time where I didn't have shit to do, mood. So that's the closest I've come to it, but in a, but there's certain spiritual experiences where I'm like, this happened in this moment at this time, and it's it's a waste of energy to recreate it to keep going. So you got to pick and choose what you think you can duplicate. You get what I'm saying, or what's okay. even worth du- what's even worth duplicating, mm-hmm. or what's even worth duplicating. Um, yeah, that's uh, because you know there's 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 certain shit I watch and I go right into a zone. Like I hadn't watched Scarface for a long time. I put that shit on and was like I was there in the eighties again. You know what I'm saying? And you know it created a mood. So you know, that's I think that's the best I can uh, come up with in terms of recreation. Okay, well, yeah, thank you. That that helps out a lot. Just um, especially yeah. that with recreating the mood, and then that'll get you to um, as close as you're gonna get to re- recreate any experience. So yeah, you you, you 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 kind of got to be in touch with with your subtle feelings about shit as well, and you also do things to try to remember that's what you're doing. So, for instance, when I had that certain feeling, when I would get on that train, because first and foremost, you're going somewhere. That's where you start your day. There's a feeling. So me being conscious at the time said, I'm going to remember this feeling. What do I see? What do I smell? And then you're focused in on that feeling, so then you create for yourself a trigger. These old movies and old songs uh, triggers that are built in based just upon time. But you can also consciously do that. Create symbols and things around you that represent certain things that you choose to remember. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That you choose to remember. So, you know, it, you just got to really be mindful of your your feelings and mindful of of your mood, you know what I mean, and what inspires your mood smells inspire your mood. For instance, um, 
Think about it. Like there may be a lotion that your grandmother used to use. Go buy that lotion. Or perfume that your grandmother used to use. Go buy that shit. Spray that shit and be amazed of the memories that you tap into. Now that you mentioned uh, smell, I finally took the love bath last night um, that Mm -hmm. I got from you, and it smells real good. I was like, I should have took this a long time ago. Oh, yeah. It's love. Yeah, it's love. It smells like love. (laughs) It's love. It's love. Like, um, there's a, I remember, um, here's, here's the thing, like, my grandmother used to use, it's, it's a bath product by Vaseline, the the bath bubbles, they have the pink one, the blue one, and the green one, mm-hmm. used to use the blue one, you could turn the water blue, I didn't know for years what that shit was, until I grew up, I so boom, I will go get some of that shit, you know what I'm saying, tap the fuck in, you know what I'm saying, and it brought me right back to that time when your grandmother used to run the tub for your ass. Oh, you know, our grandmother did for, you know, when we went over there to visit. And right back to that zone, you get what I'm saying? And, um, you know what I'm saying? But see, you know, I'm that nigga, you know what I'm saying? I still use Mr. Bubbles and shit, you know what I'm saying? That's my shit, you know what I'm saying? If you, I wish they still made that silly soap, that shit. <laughs> Niggas, you got to be your OG to remember to know what fucking silly soap is. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I said, I, I, you just know, fucks with the silly soap. And, uh, you, you know, you can just paint on the walls and shit with soap. You know what I'm saying? They had the Superman, the Batman, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> Y'all niggas don't hear me, though. <laughs> the silly soap. Yeah, if they had that shit, I'd be in the tub fucking with that shit right now. I'm saying I got rubber ducky, all that shit. So oh, yeah, it's been verified by Khadija that you got the rubber ducky, yo. Yeah, oh, she verified it. <laughs> she, she certified the rubber ducky. She's like, yeah, like she be laughing at my. Why don't you take you and your fucking duck? Shut the fuck up. And all that singing and shit. I'm getting happy, you know what I'm saying? Like this shit is just a like he's, he's a meta he's a metaphysical duck, nigga. <laughs> yeah, fucking occult duck, nigga, and shut the fuck up. And she like I, she just looks sorry, like like she'll come in the bathroom and just shake her head, like you just look fucking pathetic. She <laughs> the fucking missed the bubble and his duck. I'm like, man, leave me the fuck up. Just do my back. <laughs> like <laughs> cheapskate. Like she, she can't figure my shit out. I'm like, you don't understand. This shit is the this shit is most high wizardry. <laughs> this shit I'm doing. It's most high wizard. This is magi shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is this is adept shit. You know what I'm saying? This is the most esoterical duck. You know what I'm saying? In the motherfucking world, you don't understand. Like, nigga, you just sitting in some fucking Mr. Bubble, nigga. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> like, nigga, this shit is, it is real. Yeah, motherfucker, you're going to get a yeast infection. <laughs> <laughs> a yeast infection sitting in that shit. Like, uh, you just don't understand. You don't understand Supreme Alchemy, boo. <laughs> Don't understand supreme alchemy, boo. You know what I'm saying? You know, you oh. Don't understand. I'm saying this is the wise sage. This is the wise. This is the this is the work of the wise sage. You know what I'm saying? This is shit from the priesthood, son. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is your call. Let me get ready to go to another call. We got area code six six two. Area code six six two, you're on the line. Yeah. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, we can. Hey. I was wondering about the what uh Mandela that's going on right now, that the whole world is looking at what's going on. It's almost like looking at a movie. I was wondering, could you decode that by I don't understand because 'cause I'm the story that I read about him and the hero that they paint him on T V is two different things. I just I don't get it. 
Right. Well, we basically broke down Mandela earlier on. That actually was the first portion of the show for about um, the show, yeah. ten right. Oh, well, don't go back. Um, <laughs> might want to go back to the beginning of the show. Um, it ends at 11, so you'll be able to download it then. Um, and you can go back and listen to the first 15, 20, well, about 10, 15 minutes of the, of the beginning yeah. of the show after the music. And they'll be going to decoding um, Nelson Mandela and what actually is taking place. We compared that um, he died at 95, which was comparable to Gerald Ford, who died at 95, which was comparable to Ronald Reagan, who died at 95. And then um, the entertainers in which that died along with them, for example, um, Paul Walker died along with Nelson Mandela um, from Fast and Furious. And um, we also had um, Ray Charles. We also had James Brown, who died with Reagan and Gerald Ford. So... Um, oh. You know, so it's just things like that that we go back yeah. and check out the beginning of the mm-hmm. show. And we can you can probably get more um, understanding, understanding about what actually was taking place. Yeah, and you know something, we have to watch Fast and Furious because the whole right. Fast and Furious is about that chick returning from the dead. That's wow, right. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> that chick right returning from the dead. So I, Khadija watched it, but we're gonna buy it. It's already out. Um, because, uh, she may have bought it today because that's her shit. But it was about the chick returning from the dead. So it was, a, it was about everlasting life, which they always trying to do. So mm-hmm. we're gonna, mm-hmm. I, I definitely want to see what the movie is about now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And have you heard about that? Um, it was an ancient um, Asiatic pro- prophecy about uh, Mandela and Tupac. Where when you hear about those two names, that you will know that the ancient one have returned. Have you have you ever heard about that prophecy? And you can look through the West, the people from the West going to fulfill that prophecy. Have you heard that? Uh, but uh, which which group of people? The Asian. The yeah, the Asian. Oh, uh, is, is this is it? Oh, is it? Uh, like an Anchor Watt. Yes. Anchor Watt. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, I Have didn't you? know they had a name Tupac and Mandela. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> they but, wanted but, a name, you know. but, if you, but if you hear they say if you hear that name, Thank that you know that the ancients are, are returned, that they the prophecy have came true. So I was just wondering, is there anything like that tying into our last days? Well, of, well if, if it was said, then it's, it's going to happen. So mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. a matter of time. So if that's if, if it's been said, you know, sure enough. If it hasn't been said, it's gonna happen any goddamn way. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? The ancients, the ancients have returned. Yes. Mm-hmm. They haven't returned anyway. So, I mean, um, yeah, I haven't heard that in particular. And mm-hmm. what was Eugene Adams said it? Right, Eugene Adams. Right, Africans in Asia. Check that out. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Africans in Asia. I, I don't remember him saying Tupac or Mandela. Yeah. But you know my attention sometimes ain't there. Uh-huh. But I know he talks about prophecy, and I know I'm sure he showed about the Buddhas rising in the West. He showed That's us right. playing horns. He showed us uh, uh, shooting dope and all of these things that were going to happen right before the Buddha. In the West. I don't remember him saying Tupac or Mandela. Yeah. Okay. But not to say he didn't. Not to say okay. he didn't. Okay. Um, just you know. But shit, I'm comfortable with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> If you said it, then I, if you said it, then I believe it. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm, no oh, you're welcome. Thank you. All right, peace. Yeah, if you, but if you missed right. the beginning of the show, that, um, that's um, you, you probably want to get some detail with that. It was some supreme information that uh, Aline let out. So you probably want to get some, uh, uh, you probably want to get that information by downloading the show at 11 o'clock, sis. No doubt. And um, for those that want to call in, definitely call in at 626-414-3535. At 626-414-3535. Come on and call on in and um, get those questions answered by Brother Panic. We have approximately well, about a half an hour um, left. So come on and get um, your answer, your questions answered. All right, press one when you come on, and that way we know, and we bring you on the show. Okay, we got area code two one zero. Area code two one zero, you're on the line. 
Yo, what's going on, Aleem and Panic? Yeah. Hey, what's up, bro? Peace, What's going on? Um, just wanted to say, I just got this book, uh, Hidden Power, How to Unleash the Power of Subconscious Mind. I'm going through that, and I'm loving it right now. By James so Van I got Fleet? that, uh, yeah, yeah. James Van Fleet book, yeah, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. That one's book. real good. I, um... Excellent. Um, I'm also going to get uh, a book on, uh, that book you were talking about, Darkness Visible, but, um, because I want to start getting, starting to get more into meditation more, and so uh, I was wondering, what did you, what did you get the most out of that book? Oh, that's a powerful book. What you'll get out of that is the understanding of dark science. Um, <clears throat> it demystifies this this question about darkness, you know, because we have this rep, darkness has this reputation of dark versus light, good versus evil. So they so they go they take you out of that uh, uh, fantasy, and he explains okay. the key understanding, the key in ritual, the key of uh, uh, of the tool of darkness, and how it's used okay. in a lot of initiatory rituals. And things that happen while people are in darkness, you know, he explains in detail a lot of the old rituals about darkness. For instance, he'll tell you for a certain amount of days, you start to see in, in total darkness, you start to see fluorescent light. And then you'll start to see sh- the spirit world straight out once, you, huh. once your eyes are shut down. So, um, of course, no one has the time or patience or can do that over a certain amount of days. But him just explaining that kind of puts a whole new understanding on what darkness truly is. So <clears throat> once you read that book, the whole concept, of, especially there's a lot of us still struggling with good versus evil, dark versus light, even though we're cheerleading, well, dark is good. I think dark is cool because you're a black person. But it has nothing to do with, with, with you being black or, or white people. It has everything to do with dark light, dark energy. And so right. it, it's an excellent book that demystifies this, this whole concept of darkness being evil. And he gives you example after example um, across many different cultures of how darkness is used, how darkness is respected, how darkness is, is, is one of the major tools of alchemy, so-called dark, dark light. There's a light in the darkness. So out of darkness comes light, and it tells you many methods and ways and ancient uh, systems that they use to uh, to to promote in to promote and uh, raise up dark energy as a part of alchemy. Okay, so this that excellent book. Good. <clears throat> yeah, it's an excellent book, and like I said, even if it didn't go through all of that shit. Shit is about thirty nine cents on Amazon or some shit. <laughs> Might as well have it. By Simon Buxton, is it <laughs> Buxton? I don't know if Ross Haven is down with that one too. But Darkness Visible is the name of the book. So yeah, that's Great, thank you, brother. Another good book. Another good <clears throat> book. Not not as good as Darkness Visible is. Is an author called Constantanos. Starts spelled with a K. He has a website and. But you'd probably be better off buying his books from Amazon. He did one called uh, Nocturnaton. <clears throat> it's kind of amateur ish, but uh, he, he's, a, he's a good amateur writer. So if you haven't been into it or anything, Constantinos is a good guy to start off with because, you know, he's, he's, he's just the, the facts, you know. Um, Rock is north and, and wind is, is no, I'm sorry, wind is north and rock is south and this to the east and that to the west. All the technical understandings about magic and drawing pentagrams and all of that jazz. He's got nocturnal witchcraft, uh, gothic grimmery. He just did a vampire book because you could tell he used to be a gothic dude. And maybe two other good books. Um <laughs> And one of them, again, is Nocturnaton. He did Seven Ways to Speak to Spirits and so on and so forth. So he's a good guy to have cheap books for just the ABCs of magic. And Nocturnaton, he, got, he has a few dark meditations, 
So as I believe there's some dark meditations and darkness visible, but they're they're more decoding darkness for exercises that Constantino's book is 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 fairly good. Nocturniton, because he'll give you a few meditations. All his meditations are to the god Haiti, because that's because he's trying to make make it as dark as he knows, which is the Greek Titan Hades. But you know you can go with anybody, Osiris or whatever dark energy you want to deal with. He uses Hades, but he got he has a, a few kick ass meditations and a few uh, 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 you know sigil writing. Uh, 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 systems and all the rest of that in that book. So Constantinos is a good thing to start out with as well. Just like get get a understanding darkness visible to get a true understanding of darkness to demystify. And Constantinos he gives you meditations. He also helps to demystify it as well. So that's a good one. So that's a good one, right? Yeah, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else on dark? I mean, everything else I mean, is dark, but it's more magical. I'm looking at my books now, but anything that goes right to it. Um, the only other book, if you can get it, is The Magician. <sighs> What's the name? Peter something. Hold on, let me find out for you one second. Uh, if you can get this Peter Cooper I believe Philip Cooper The Magician A Study of of Effective Magic If you can get it um, it, uh, it it deals heavy with the subconscious mind And the subconscious mind's role In magic um, Let me see what else we got by way of black? Eh, it's pretty good, but I'll still let you know. There's a book called The Black Arts by Richard Cavendish. This is something good to have in the library. Constantino's name is spelled K O N S T A N T I N O S. That's the author. <coughs> He's. You know, like I say, he's he's a good basic guy to have. Um, I'm looking to see if there's anything dark. Anything else I'm looking at is like, eh, nothing that's nothing that's in the same vein as darkness visible. Anything else is a little bit more expanded. So I mean, let me see, um, mystical dragon. Um, yeah, I guess I mean those those two that'd be good by way of dark magic if you've been with this dark shit. And Richard Cavendish is okay in that level. But he can break down things like Baphomet and just a certain, give you a certain understanding of the magic. Like I said, the all time favorite is Libra Null and the Psychonaut. Um, an introduction to chaos magic by Peter J. Carroll and um, Prime Chaos by Phil Hine, H-I-N-E. Those are excellent books about uh, chaos magic, like I said, um, which is basically melanin magic, which is actually your natural state of being if they had the right books, try to understand the concept. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the concept of, of, of your, your natural creative thought. So what you, what you find and do naturally, you know, they, they still have, you know, they have to struggle with it. And one of their biggest breakthroughs was the Chaos Magic book. And they have a they, he's calling it Kia or referring to this magical substance Kia through the book, which is actually melanin. So if they say melanin, the game is over. That's you just basically said niggas and not me. So what I notice in these books they'll have 
every name but melanin for the substance of melanin. So it becomes butter, elixir. In fact, on my YouTube page, it called Lectures, um, Bobby has a lecture called The History of Melanin, a must-watch. The History of Melanin is a must-watch. I've been getting a few white emails, and, and they seem to want to say, first and foremost, they exclaim how they're, they're my brothers, but they, without, but not without them saying how first how melanin is really not that important. You know what I'm saying? So they, they you know, I'll get an email. White people will say melanin is not really what makes you a god. <laughs> you know, uh, in the fifth dimension, are we are we not colors? Uh, <laughs> what color would you be? First of all, who the fuck said I'm going to the fifth dimension? <laughs> I don't know who the fuck said that. And uh, and technically, it has nothing to do with colors. How you show up here is a color, maybe a, only a representation of a power. From let's even say, pretend and say the fifth dimension, you may be only a reflection of it. And, and this is under the assumption that sh- that you niggas is going to show up there. <laughs> and, but and, but to supersede all that bullshit, fuck a fifth dimension, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm an interdimensional being. I, you know what I mean? If I'm in the fifth dimension, that means I'm not in the sixth dimension and I'm just as fucked up. So, but let's pretend. So they, they, they tell you melanin is not important. So one of the archive tapes I put up without having a, you know, I don't even reply to that bullshit. I just put up Bobby, the history of melanin, where he's going through detail about the science of melanin, and basically, he makes the claim, backs up the claim, and with with his research that alchemy is the study of melanin. At the end. So anybody who says they're conscious, he he breaks down in detail how if you're saying you're an alchemist, a magician, or whatever it is they even claim to be, then you're studying melanin. Period. And whether they call it that is a different story. And he goes through all the names, which are which are which are a lot. That can be referred to as melanin. You know, Merkaba, butter, Kia, all you know, elixirs, and all all sorts of. And he goes through at least ten to fifteen names that is come up encoded as melanin. So, so even the shit they study in and think that they're getting over because we, they don't say the word melanin, studying melanin. And this is proven in that. So you, that's a must watch. Bobby Hemmings lecture, the uh, history of melanin, which I have up on my YouTube occult lectures at uh, hotmail.com. Now, I did a uh, breakdown of the Wizard of Oz and connected it to the chakras. Um, people liked it, liked it a lot. I'm going to do one now on uh, Charlie in the in the. Uh, uh, chocolate factory I say I don't think they're worthy Of a whole blog talk So I usually just do a, a, About 45 minutes I'll just break it down On uh, YouTube I, I don't think I want to call people's attention For that You know it's something like a hobby more or less So I think I'm going to do Charlie and them next Because that was a hell of a chakra story as well And usually those Go well because Uh it's, it's classic movies, and it shows people um, that they ain't, they ain't bullshitting with the occult and how they how they do, which we should know by now. But you know, always decoding, and you know, like I said it helps people out. So, you know what, too, God, um, in mm-hmm. physics, because I got a mathematics, but in college, instead of them saying melanin, they'll say a dark colored can. And how it can hold mm. the, you know, the different degrees of heat, you know. But instead of saying mm. melanin, it's a painted and black. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, they will not say melanin. Once you say melanin, it's been associated with black folks. So once you say that, the, the jig is up. So you know, in movies, it's this evil substance. Like in in um, in especially in the uh, scary movies of the '90s and the '80s. You know, they'll, you'll hear them, there's this substance that's returned, this, ev- this ancient evil, the stuff, 
um, um, uh, uh, ghost ship and all the rest of that is always this black substance, the blob. There's always this black substance or this substance that, that, that's kind of taken over. They'll never say melanin. And um, even this whole last Thor movie was probably one of the baddest melanin movies ever. Like, something's in you. I got to watch that again. Like, something's in you that's ancient and evil. It is just melanin. You know what I mean? And they, they, they just bring him. He's like, no, I need that. And the, and the, the black nigga woke up and said, I need that back. You know what I'm saying? I, basically, basically, I've been misusing the melanin. You know what I'm saying? I need it back. And so, so like, they'll never say it. You know what I'm saying? They'll never say it. And um, the closest one to saying it, if they haven't said it, and I believe they have, is, like, Gerald Massey. And then he got, um, if, he did, if he didn't say melanin, he still pointed out that black folks are the, are the ancient ones. Um, that are coming back. That's that's what all this shit is about. Blah blah blah. In other words, he just gave credit to the black people, and that was it for him. You know what I mean? Uh, sco- uh, as a scholar, they shut him down. And right, the closest the movie, probably in the movie would be um, the movie Dune when they said Melange. Right, 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 and right, and um, uh, right, right, and uh, they show it all the time. The Necromongers and, and Riddick, that black mist, they show it all the time. It's just, um, right. you know, we, we just not, if we, we're just taught to not acknowledge it or hate it. We, you know, we don't understand. And, and even, see, what they did to try to shut it down was say melanin was just a part of your skin color. So that, uh-huh. that connected it to black people. That connected it to black people. It, um, you know, there's levels of melanin, melanin in your air, neuromelanin. In fact, uh, it said, you know, when you see this image of the fighting Irish, and you, you ever see a white boy fight, you'd be pounding their face in a hamburger meat, and they still be like, come on, let's go, buddy. And it's like, <laughs> your lip is hanging off. He said, this is not because they're superior or tough, because they have very little neuromelanin, and they actually don't feel it. So you smack the shit out of a nigga, ow, because you actually feel this shit because of your melanin. You get what I'm saying? With them with lack of melanin, you pound in the mouth. They don't even know they hurt to the next fucking day. You know what I'm saying? You always hear about them getting beat up and dying the next day in the hospital. It's like, well, well, you was fighting, you know what I'm saying, for 17 hours, you know what I'm saying, just getting beat in the head. And you should have, come on, Rocky, and all this shit. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> Cut my eyes, Adrian. It's Adrian. It's like, you ain't got no melanin, dude. Melanin. <laughs> Adrian, you should be calling melanin. Melanin. <laughs> then, like, um, um, because uh, they have no neuromelanin, and um, so so it's very hard for them to get a signal to their brain, and um, so there's inner ear melanin. So once Richard King. And these guys came out um, in Carol Barnes, and especially uh, Richard King, who started te- uh, teaching on different levels of melanin, what melanin really does, melanin in the eye, why we taste more, why we hear more, why we see deeper. You know what I'm saying? That's why they're looking at you. You ever see a white person look at you and be blinking a thousand times? Because it's like them looking at the sun. They can't take it. They can't look you directly in the fucking eyes. You know what I'm saying? That's based upon your melanin hue. Now, um, so, but what they did was, instead of um, instead of really giving a true understanding of melanin, they just said, that's just what makes black people black. So when now in the occult world, if you say the word melanin, then it's connected to black people for that reason. And so they can't say it because now you already... Um, trying to shut it down in terms of what it really is, you just made it something for your skin color. That's why these white people have the audacity to email me and and speak lowly of, like, your God because of melanin. This is poppy thought. They're saying this because they don't understand what melanin really is, how instrumental it is in in the in, in, in its entirety. They're just thinking that it makes you a dark-skinned person. And because you're dark-skinned, we're living off of that. And for the most part, that's all black people really got. 
I'm a black queen. That's why I'm a queen. It's like, nah, uh-uh. You have superior genetics. Yeah. And so, so like, if I was decide to indulge this white boy, I'm like, my genetics are superior. Where I'm going after this is based upon is based upon work that I've already done. You, 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 your, your, your body is putrid. You know what I'm saying? You, you got a long way to go. And I'm, a, and I'm one of the sensitive black guys. I think they will can have alchemy and eventually become niggers and eventually make it because they started because they started off from a nigger You know what I'm saying? They they fall down that scale, but I, I'm I'm one of the guys that think they, you know, if a roach could evolve, I believe they could evolve. It ain't happening with us. It ain't happening nowhere in our time, but I think it can happen because there's a lot of black people that think they they just gonna they're about to disappear. It was just a moment, and you know it is what it is. But all of that to say, um, you know, they are. Whole, they, um, so they they back themselves in the corner where they can't use the word melanin. You know they they back themselves in the corner where they can't use the word melanin. Fine with me because they can't use melanin anyway. You know, fine with them they can't use it anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right, brother Penny, we got seven more minutes, and um, we don't have any more. Right now, but if there's one caller that want to get it in before the seven minutes, um, 626 3535. That's 626 414 3535. Give us a call. If not, um, Brother Penny, I need a closing remarks. All right. We'll, we'll talk if somebody comes on, just interrupt me. And what we'll do is right. we'll just say, well, I'm, I'll be back next week. Well, hold you know on, because they already doing it. <laughs> All right, we've got Eric okay. Code 210. Eric Code 210, you on the line. Greetings, Steve. Steve. Yo, yo. Hey, Sean. All right, we got Eric Code 504. 504, you on the line. Hello. Peace. Yeah, hey, um, I just um I just wanted to say I recently went back and heard uh the lecture Destroy Religion and I mm-hmm. really appreciated it and enjoyed the lecture and I think it was like the exact explanation that's needed right now. Okay. And good. I also wanna um ask, do you have any updates on your book? Um, yes. Um actually uh I was supposed to edit it today. I didn't get a chance, so we're gonna to try to reschedule. But I got we got three more chapters to do, and and formatting it, then I'm putting it out. So it's just about three more chapters to proofread, basically. Mm-hmm. But all all the writing is done. So okay. it's it's a matter of timing now. The person mm-hmm. who's uh, who's uh, uh, doing the work is just a matter of getting our watches synchronized. But uh, mm-hmm. once that happens, we'll get it out the way. And then, so it's coming soon. It's coming real soon. And when it does, I'm going to make a big stink over it. All this talk, I'm going to make a big-ass stink over it. So you'll know when it's that mm-hmm. time. Okay. Yeah. And it, so it'll be soon, real soon. All it's right. a matter of synchronizing our watches. And I'm glad mm-hmm. that uh, Lexa worked out for you. And. Again, if 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 you if you if you're not too familiar with my work or vaguely familiar, just email me at panicpack at hotmail dot com and I'll be happy to send links to all the lectures I've ever done for free. So okay. so if you, if you need the links, um, go, you know, go ahead and just send, shoot me an email, and um, you know, of course, like I said, there's always classes and I have a plenty of products. Panicpack at hotmail dot com. So you know, you got to get at me. All right. All right, but I'm glad that lecture is helping. Yeah. Right. Thank, Thank you. you now. Mm-hmm. All right, we're gonna go back to area code two one zero. Two one zero. You're on the line. Oh, my bad. It is still yeah, kept me on. <laughs> What up? What up? Well, I, did, I actually did want to say, um, 
appreciate the classes also, man. Uh, I really appreciate it. Everything uh, worked out pretty well for me. Started doing, uh, getting more serious uh, with authors and whatnot. Who, who's this? Uh, Terrence. Oh, Terrence, what up? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I, good, good. I just want to let you know, you know, everything worked out real well for me. Um, Excellent. We're looking forward to take uh, Aline's class also. I, um, yeah, one of the things good that, uh, one of the things that helped me out was I got an ancestor, uh, wall and put Bruce Lee up on one of them and I asked him to give me a feature. And, uh, a few days later, you know, uh, brother came in my job and, uh, we started chatting for a while and he actually, uh, offered to teach me, uh, uh, Shingi or a style of Kung Fu. Mm. So, you know, things like that happen in real quick. <laughs> Mm, it blows me good, away. Good. good, good, good. That's exactly what we're trying to do here. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Start shaping our own reality. That's good to hear. Yes, another satisfied customer. <laughs> exactly. And it's, it's a very good idea to take Aline's course, too. Very good idea. Very and good also, idea. Also, Aline, I had, a, I had a question for you, also, man. Yes. Uh, how was that trip that you uh, took to Mexico? Oh, it was excellent, brother. It was about 19 of us, and we just went to the mounds, well, to the pyramid sites, and actually we got into um, the pyramids and actually did a ritual. Brother Azariah, my wife, and um, his wife and several others actually was inside of the pyramids doing rituals. So we got a chance to feel the ancestral energy. We also saved some um, Mexicans who were um, just floating. They were screaming, Are you that man? Are you that too? Are you a too? So, you know, the whole ship turned around and went and got them. So we really had a great oh, time. Man. Mm-hmm. Real cool. Oh, yeah. And um, I think we only got less than a minute left. So, um, Brother Penny, you want to close us out? Okay. We'll be back next week. Um, First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m., Doing what we do, we're going to keep it science night, ain't nothing changed. Um, we're going to have some powerful lectures coming soon. Right now we're doing Q&A, get people back in the mood, let people know we're still in effect. Um, hit us up. You can hit DrLeamLBay.com. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Burn. Proceeding levels in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Burn. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Burn. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Burn. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is
is not just gonna be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. 